and welcome to this production of Grass Trap Banter Promotions Bantasia 2. Uh, we're here at the venue, uh, which we've started to call Bantasia Arena, uh, for a day of brilliant grass track racing. 40 races are scheduled for today. We've got some of Europe's be best grass track riders in action today. We've got Theo Piper, two times European champion. We've got James Shanes, two times European champion. We've got Zach Weichnecht, he's a European champion, and a whole host of other good riders as well. Supporting those riders, of course, as always in British grass track, are the big 1,000cc sidecars. It's a very tight track here at the Bantasia Arena, and we're looking forward to seeing just how well the sidecars go around here. We've also got support from the 250cc solos, and we've got all the good riders that you'd expect to see in that class, as well as the old and new sidecars, the budget class of sidecars, and a little open solo class as well, giving some of the club riders a bit of a chance to race too. It's set up for a fantastic day. The weather is beautiful. There's lots of ground frost this morning, so it was very cold for those that camped over, but it's been a fantastic morning so far. We cannot wait to see what's going on with the racing. In a moment, we're gonna get some of the thoughts of some of the riders here uh, before racing, see what they're thinking, see what their prep's been like, uh, and then after that, we can get on with some racing. So the first rider that we've uh, caught up with, or well, we had to really, the, uh, the reigning Bantasia champion, uh, James Shane. So James, back for the second year at Bantasia, looking forward to it? Yeah, yeah, always looking forward to come back. It's been a happy place the last couple of meetings we've done here last year and it's always nice to come to the zoo as well, so it's definitely <laughs> going to be a fun day out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you hear the monkeys sometimes getting fed, but it's, uh, yeah, obviously you've just talked to me about the track, the track looks good, so obviously feeling that uh, feeling it's going to be all right for you? Yeah, yeah, it looks a lot better, you know, the first meeting it, the track was good and then, and, the, and then for the pre-75s it was even better, so it's definitely... Definitely looking but good and they've moved the track a little bit so hopefully it'll be even better this time and we'll see with some, with, with some top riders there, we'll get, we'll get some good racing going. Yeah, I mean last year there was some good racing and some top names but this year we've gone all out and there's a lot of big names and I mean you must be looking forward to, to racing them because they all know how good you are on the grass. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's always nice when you get to, you know, get or catch up with everyone again. It's been a long time since I've seen sort of Kenneth and, and Jakob and Zach, it's been, you know, quite a long time would say it's nice but you know it's different um it's <laughs> it's yeah it's nice to get out with the top riders again and have a sort of a good good fight again yeah good week last week at Ledbury. yeah yeah we had a few teething problems in the first race um but always do when you sort of got new bites and trying some new things with roger again so there's always a few little team problems but got it sorted and hopefully we'll crack on today yeah we'll have a good day today james obviously you'll be trying to defend your championship and the target's on your back so good luck with it and we'll see you see how you get on see ya thank you so next up, we've got a guy who we were really uh, looking forward to seeing here today. He wasn't here last year. We're delighted to see you here, Zach, uh, at Bantasia too. Yeah, it should be good. Um, first meeting, so uh, yeah, um, I haven't been out for a while, and obviously it's good to get back to a bit of normality as well. So um, yeah, should be a good day. Yeah, you had a real disrupted, obviously not doing the speedway, you had a real disrupted time for COVID, didn't you? Yeah, um, obviously I quit the speedway in 2019, and then um, yeah, that was just through, obviously, no one knew COVID was going to hit, so uh, yeah, just a few on and off meetings, and then obviously the long track was cut short, and um, yeah, that's just, just the way it was, I suppose. Yeah, but great to get back into the the long track the way you did. I mean, that was a great ride at, um, in Czech. Yeah, it was good. Um, obviously, it was not not ideal, wasn't a long track, but that was the way it had to be, and um, yeah, it, it all worked all worked well in Czech, and. Uh, yeah, just got on and managed to get the job done and take a bit of pressure off for the next round then. Yeah, well, it's really good and great to see you in the series again. But today, Bantasia 2, obviously completely different to anything you'd race on abroad. Uh, obviously, uh, waiting to see how it'll go, but looking forward to it? Yeah, it's uh, English grass track in it. So, um, no, it, it should be good. Um, new club, uh, it's what, what we need really. There's, sometimes we lose a lot, quite a lot of clubs, so uh, yeah, it's good. And uh, yeah, hopefully it sh should be, as long as everyone's all right, it should be good. Great stuff. Well, it's great to see you here, Zach. We're really chuffed to see you here. Um, have a good day. Thank you. So one of the things we are pleased about for uh, Bantasia 2 is we've got a bit of an international uh, feel to it. And one of our international riders from Denmark is Jakob Bukhava. Jakob, uh, had a bit of a go on the grass, haven't you? But uh, yeah, looking forward to it today. Yeah, definitely. It looks like a good day and uh, nice that the sun is out. Not so normally in England for us yeah. coming from Europe. So yeah, it's good. It's going to be a good day, I'm sure. So how's your, uh, have you ridden yet this season? How's the season started for you? Um, we've only been doing a bit of uh, speed, we a bit of, we went to Roden in Holland and did, and tried the bikes out and yeah, I did a bit of drift and ice in Denmark as well, so yeah, yeah. been a bit around. <laughs> yeah, a bit of all sorts of things going on then, but um, obviously today here, this track is probably something that you've not really ridden on uh, before, a few bumps and stones and things, how are you feeling about that? Oh well, it's going to be, it's going to be fun to try it out. I did. 
uh, I think last year I did one here, um, and then came to another one and got rained off, but I never got to Bantasia, so yeah, I'm looking forward to try this out as well. Yeah, we're really pleased you were coming. Obviously, we were due to have you last year, and uh, things didn't work out, but um, yeah, it should be good. I mean, it's, you've got some great backing as well, haven't you, for the British grass track? Oh, yeah, of course. I've um, got Gary Southgate behind me, and uh, yeah, he's doing pretty much everything, so I just fly in and uh, have a great day out of it with him. So. Yeah, living the dream. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, have a good day today, Jacob. Thanks for coming, and it's going to be really good to see you out there. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to it. So continuing with our uh, international theme, we've got another Danish rider. We've got three Danish riders here with us today, but second of our Danish riders, former world number two, Kenneth Cruz Hansen. So Kenneth, finally, we've got you to the Bantasia Arena. Yeah, thank God that COVID seems to be over. You know, it's been a few troubled years for all of us. And uh, yeah, just happy to be here. And hopefully it's going to be a good event for, for you guys and for British uh, grass track in general. We do hope so, because obviously you've done a little bit of British grass track. We were sort of talking about it before and uh, you know, various different tracks and things that we've seen. Um, and it's great to have you here, but you've obviously, it's the first time you've seen the, the track, you've seen a bit of a video of it. What's your first impressions? Are you feeling good? Uh, it looks like <laughs> No, <laughs> it's, uh, it looks good, you know, a good setup here. The track uh, seems to be good. Uh, I think it's gonna be a nice size for racing, uh, hopefully some interesting racing for, for the spectators. Uh, it seems good, you know, uh, I like what you uh, have been done, doing so far and, uh, you know, keep up the good work. We will try, yeah, we're trying to, but obviously we're, we're delighted to have you here as, and support the meeting. Uh, we've got the smaller track and we've sort of talked about that a little bit. It's sort of like a big speedway track, really, the size-wise, but uh, obviously with the long track, you've had some good rounds on the speedway and on the, on the bigger long tracks as well. So, I mean, size for, of the circuit doesn't seem to make much difference. No, I mean, I, I believe that you have to be able to race small tracks, big tracks and grass tracks and, and sand tracks to become good, you know. So since I started only three years ago, uh, I've been trying to do as many meetings as I can on various circuits to sort of learn the trade. And uh, so far it's been good and I look forward to come here and, and you know, gain, gain some more experience and, and hopefully I can uh, mix it with the, with the good British guys. Yeah, there's some good riders here as well, isn't there? So, I mean, you've got some real competition. I mean, there's lots of them that you race against quite often on the continent, so they won't be unusual to you. Um, but uh, so far this season, how, you know, you've done a lot, bit, a bit of speedway, I know, in France and things. How's the season started so far? Because you've had a long time out, of course. Yeah, well, it's, it's been good. You know, obviously the first couple of meetings, there was a bit of rust to get out of the system, you know. Uh, I, I feel good. Uh, Body is strong. Bike seems to be good. Uh, so it's going to be good to get behind the tapes and actually see where we are. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's great to have you back. Obviously, I just touched on you were injured last year, but uh, all the injuries and everything, everything behind you now. Well, I hope so. Uh, it seems to be OK. It's uh, 10 months since I had my surgery and uh, I feel in a, in a good physical condition. You know, I've lost uh, nearly 12 kilos and uh, I, I feel more fit than ever. And hopefully it's going to prove on the track as well. Yeah, excellent. Well, we can't wait to see it, Kenneth. So good luck today. Have a great day. And uh, yeah, we'll try and catch up with you later on. Super. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we're moving to the sidecars now because, uh, yeah, this big chair is obviously a big part of British grass track and uh, somebody that's up and coming at the moment, uh, plenty of pedigree in this one, Robbie Simmons. Uh, Robbie, you've had a little bit of a go now at the grass track and, uh, you know, things are sort of coming to you, aren't they? Yeah, we had a couple of meetings last year. Obviously, a couple got cancelled due to the weather and that is the English weather. But, yeah, we went, away, went around, done the right with the meetings we got to and, yeah, just like to progress again. This yeah. year, but I mean, you were you were taking some scalps of people that have been driving a long time. I mean, you must have been a little bit surprised, ni nicely surprised as well by your pace. Yeah, I think riding on the back of obviously my dad and Mark, and I've had a lot of experience with passengering, so I've learnt how the bike will work and yes yeah, come in my advantage a bit really yeah and it's also history repeating itself because your dad did exactly the same yeah well yeah dad <laughs> done the same and dad done well over the years and yeah i'd like to follow what he done and yeah just progress and just get better as it goes on yeah now you've seen the track today at, uh, at this track here you looking forward to this track yeah i've been looking forward to it just to get it's been a long winter in it and then coming to here it's all been promoted it well and the track looks well yeah it's just nice to be at a grass track again yeah, good stuff. Well, Robbie, have a good day today. Obviously, uh, lots of people looking out for you and looking for you to progress to the next level. And uh, it's going to be a big year, I think. Yeah, we, yeah, we do what we can. <laughs> That's it. Cheers, Robbie. Thank you very much. Cheers. So here come the elite solo riders. Some fantastic talent amongst them. We've seen them in practice. They look very, very quick. And the thousand sidecasts following them around. Paul Whitelam and Richard Webb. Dave Buckley. 
and Steve Smith. Number 78, Kieran Hicks and Kieran Ivey. Anthony Sales and Michael Topman. Joseph Sturtridge and Sean Hoskin. Number 20, Dale Fish and Jordan Fish. Mark Cosser and Gareth Williams going by. Clint Blondell and Jordan Smith. Number 80, Will Offen and Ricky Pay. Number 15, Matt Fimrola and Andy Wilson. George Penfold and Danny Hill go by. Michael Austin and Vinnie Branch. Will Penfold and Bradley Reynolds. And the old and new sidecars coming by. Led by Paul Nelson and Lewis Wharton. Brian Hatch and Lou Wharton. Luke Tuck. 250 riders coming by. And Will Thurby and Daniel Broughton. Adam Hawker. Tim Grigg. Number five, Max Perry doing his demonstration races today. Jordan Derrick, number 247, coming past. Number 24, Terry Saunters and Liam Brown. That's Frankie Courtney on the back there as well. Load of 250s coming past us now. We've got Cameron Taylor, Chris Simmons, Ace Piper's in there as well. Ben Phillips bringing up the rear as well. Number 72 is Mark Courtney and Leon Torres. They won Bantasia last year on the old and new class. That is Steen Piper, number 159. Chris Tyrrell and Willow Jeffrey. Chris Malone, Nigel Coates. Barry Coates coming past. L happy to be in the meeting today, Barry. And finally, Neil Owen and Jason Farwell coming past on the Godden. And we do have one more rider. I think that's possibly Wayne Broadhurst is the last rider to come round. And it is Wayne Broadhurst who comes past in the open class. So that is the riders for today's racing. Race number one will be the 1,000cc right-hand sidecars and we are expecting to see the reigning British Masters champion, number 37, Mark Costa and Gareth Williams coming out of gate one. Michael Austin and Vinnie Branch out of gate two. Out of three will be Will Offen and Ricky Pay. Trevor Heath and Sam Heath will be coming off of gate four. There's a change to gate five. It will be Dave Buckley and Steve Smith and Joe Sturtridge and Sean Hoskin off gate six. So... As always with right-hand sidecar racing, anyone that's familiar to the sport will know Mark Cosser is the man to catch usually. He's coming off the inside, but plenty of talent on the outside of him on that start line. Dave Buckley and Joseph Sturtridge. Joseph went so well last year. So tapes up on race one and away they go. And it is Trevor Heath from the middle of the start who makes the best of it going into that turn. Trevor Heath leads. Mark Cosser rolls in after him. He's completely sideways in the middle of the turn. It's Joseph Sturtridge who leads out the turn, but Trevor Heath's come round the outside of him. So Trevor and Sam Heath lead. Mark Cosser back into that second place. Joe Sturtridge now in that third place, and Michael Austin in fourth. Trevor Heath's going to have to have eyes in the back of his head because Mark Cosser looks very quick behind him in that second place. There's a real battle going on for fourth and fifth as well as Will Offen puts the move in on Michael Austin. So at the front, Trevor Heath and Sam Heath, they lead the way. Mark Cosser, he's got to find his way past. He's pushing Trevor Heath. He's pushed him as he goes into that turn. Definite contact in the middle of the turn, but Trevor Heath still leads. Joe Sturtridge is battling away in that third. Mark Hoss has now gone up the inside of Trevor Heath. Very close as they come off that turn. It's still Trevor Heath who leads. Mark Hoss in that second place. He pulls back to regroup. Trevor Heath turns the bike hard in the middle of the turn. The last lap flags out. He's only got to hold on for one more lap. Still this battle rages in third and fourth between Joe Sturtridge and Will Offen. But eyes are at the front of the field because Trevor Heath and Mark Costa seems to have stopped on the back straight. Problems for Mark Costa on the back straight. But a fabulous win. What a win that was. Trevor Heath and Sam Heath, number 191, they take the win. Mark Costa finishes second on a very sick standing machine. Will Offen third, Joe Statridge fourth and Michael Austin fifth. 
What a start to Bantasia 2. Fabulous racing from the front crews. So a brilliant race there for race number one, sponsored by RJC Autos. It was a win though for number 191, Trevor Heath and Sam Heath. Second place, number 37, Mark Cossa and Gareth Williams. Third place, number 80, Will Offen and Ricky Pay. Fourth place, number 13, Joe Sturtridge and Sean Hoskin. Fifth place, number 991, Michael Austin and Vinnie Branch. And sixth place, number 40, Dave Buckley and Steve Smith. The winning time, 1 minute 25.22. And we will see how that time compares as we get race two onto the circuit. Race two, another right-hand sidecar race. Coming to the line in this one, we have got number 78, Kieran Hicks and Kieran Ivey coming off one. Off two is Paul Whitelam and Richard Webb, number 92. Coming off gate three, number seven, Paul Johnson and Ben Schofield. Gate four, we'll see Robbie Simmons and Wayne Rickards. Gate five is Anthony Sales and Michael Topman. And gate six, Dale and Jordan Fish come in to replace Simon Heal and Tom Smith. What a blockbuster we've got in store here. Some very, very quick riders in race number two. So tapes go up. Who's going to show first? It's a quick start from the outside from Dale Fish. But it's Paul Wyler and Richard Webb who lead into the turn. Paul Johnson's gone roaring in after him. Kieran Hicks has gone up on the inside too. It's very close as they exit the turn, but it's Paul Wyler and Richard Webb who lead. Paul Johnson and Ben Schofield have tucked into that second place with Kieran Hicks third. Robbie Simmons finds himself in fourth and Dale Fish is battling away for that fifth at the moment. So Paul Whiteland and Richard Webb, one time British Masters champion Paul Whiteland. Looking good in this one, Robbie Simmons has come up the inside of Kieran Hicks and gone into that third place. And Kieran Hicks immediately mounts a challenge back round the outside of Robbie Simmons to try and retake that third, but it looks like Robbie Simmons has got enough. Paul Whiteland and Richard Webb looking very comfortable in this race. Paul Johnson now looks in danger with that second because Robbie Simmons is all over the back of him. He's been filled in as he goes down that back straight and he's backed off a little bit. Last lap flag made ready then. Paul Whiteland and Richard Webb looking very, very good in this one. Paul Johnson still holding on to that second place. Can Robbie Simmons do anything about that in that third? He's keeping an eye on Paul Johnson. But it looks like Paul Johnson's got enough as they go back down that back straight. It's going to be a win though for number 92, Paul Whiteland and Richard Webb. A convincing win for them. Number seven, Paul Johnson and Ben Schofield finish second. Robbie Simmons in third, Kieran Hicks fourth, Anthony Sales fifth and Dale Fish in sixth. So a very comparable time to the first heat, but the winner, the first place is number 92, Paul Whiteland and Richard Webb. Second place, number seven, Paul Johnson and Ben Schofield. Third place, number nine, Robbie Simmons and Wayne Rickards. Fourth place, number 78, Kieran Hicks and Kieran Ivey. Fifth place, number 778, Anthony Sales and Michael Topman. And sixth place, number 20, Dale Fish and Jordan Fish. And the winning time, very close to the other time, 125.41. So race number three, sponsored by Palm Court Hotel, Shanklin. 1,000 CC sidecars, the third of heat of these sidecars. So gate one, Matt Fumarola and Andy Wilson. Neil Owen and Jason Farwell look very quick in practice. They come out of gate two. Clint Blondell and Jordan Smith out of three. Terry Saunters and Liam Brown, last week's winner, of course, out of gate four. Can they continue their four? And then we've got Will Penfold and Bradley Reynolds out of five. And George Penfold and Danny Hill out of six in a very, very even looking race three. Tapes go up, there's problems for Clint Blondell getting off the line, but it's Terry Saunters who makes a very quick start. Neil Owen goes diving up the inside of him though, it's Neil Owen who leads, Terry Saunters cuts back, he goes right up the inside of him and so does Will Penfold, but Penfold stops, it's Terry Saunters who leads. Neil Owen tucks into that second place, a good first turn from Terry Saunters. He allowed Neil Owen to go wide and just nipped up the inside of him. Will Penfold in that third place looking for another mistake from Neil Owen. Matt Fumarola at the back at the moment. Neil Owen's now having a go at Terry Saunters at the front. It's certainly not a safe victory at the moment for Terry Saunters. He's got Neil Owen all over the back of him. So Terry Saunters and Liam Brown, absolute revelation at the moment in the class. One last week. Will Penfold seems to have problems in this third place. Hand up for the passenger. George Penfold's now going to try and find a way past. Now he goes past, but it's Terry Saunters then. Leading the way, the last lap flag is out. 
Will Penfold looking like he's got all sorts of problems with that machine. He's holding Matthew Marola at bay at the moment, even on a sick machine. But Terry Saunters and Liam Brown, very, very quick. They exit the pit corner for the final time. They take the win, a good win for number 24. Neil Owen in second. George Penfold fights his way through to third. Matthew Marola does get by for fourth. And that sick sounding machine of Will Penfold finishes in fifth. So the results of race number three, it was a win for number 24, Terry Saunters and Liam Brown. Second place, number 12, Neil Owen and Jason Farwell. Third place, number 124, George Penfold and Danny Hill. Fourth place, number 15, Matthew Marola and Andy Wilson. No sixth finisher. Uh, fifth place, I should give you, 22, Will Penfold and Bradley Reynolds. No sixth finisher. And the winning time, 1 minute 24. 0.50, so the fastest of the three, 124.50 from the very fast starting Terry Saunters and Liam Brown. So race four, sponsored by Stella Dispatch, the elite solo class. And we've got a few changes, of course, in the program. We will be expecting to see out of gate one, number 20, Aaron Butcher. We will not see anyone out of gate two, Andrew Appleton struck down with COVID. Out of gate three, we have got number 412, Morton Quisgard. Gate 4 will be Tony Atkin. Gate 7 will be Paul Cooper. Gate 8 will be Daniel Winterton. Finn Lowheader will be out of gate 9. And gate 10, number 69, Chad Wurtzfeld. So, a very, again, a very open looking race, this one. Race 4 then, the Elite Solos, sponsored by Stella Dispatch, makes a start. As they leave the start, it does look like that is Chad Wurtzfeld that leads into the turn. I can see by the style it's Chad Wurtzfeld. A brilliant start for him. Paul Cooper tucks up right up close to him as he comes out the turn. Tony Atkins in third, Daniel Winston fourth. And that's Aaron Butcher in fifth with Finn Lowheeder sixth at the moment. So, at the front, Chad Wurtzfeld. Lots of people very impressed with Chad last weekend at Ledbury. Looked very, very quick and he's looking quick in this one. Paul Cooper in that second place, no answer at all to Tony Atkin. Our two European riders having a battle at the back at the moment, but Chad Wurzfeld, look at the style of him as he goes into that turn. Fantastic looking style, he takes the last lap flag here. Really is no answer to him, Paul Cooper in that second place, riding well, Morton Quisgard in that sixth place at the moment, but round the final turn, for the final time, it's going to be a win for number 69, Chad Wurtzfeld. Second place will be Paul Cooper, number 11. Third place, number 10, Tony Atkin. Daniel Winston, fourth. Fifth place to Aaron Butcher. Sixth place will be Morton Quisgard. And seventh place to the German, Finn Lowheeder. So the results of race four, sponsored by Stella Despatch, the Elite Solos, it was a win for number 69, Chad Wurtzfeld. Second place, number 11, Paul Cooper. Third place, number 10, Tony Atkin. Fourth place, number 12, Daniel Winterton. Fifth place, number 20, Aaron Butcher. Sixth place, number 412, Morton Quisgard. And sixth place, number 66, Finn Lowheeder. And the winning time, 105.69, 105.69. So we go to race five, and this race looks like an absolute corker on paper. Once again, sponsored by Stella Despatch. We have got out of gate one, Jake Mulford, number 72. Out of gate two, we've got Je Jakob Bukhava. Gate four will be James Shanes. Gate seven, Zach Weichneck. Gate eight, Theo Piper. Gate nine will be Alfie Botel and Kenneth Cruz Hansen. Out of the outside in gate 10. What a race lineup that is. So here we go with race number five. Tapes up and away they go. And it looks like Zach Veit next made a very quick start as they go into this first turn. He slows up the opposition. It's James Shanes tucking up on the inside. James Shanes is up that inside and he's past Zach Veit next coming out the turn. So it's Shanes followed by Veit next. Theo Piper's in that third place. Kenneth Hansen's in fourth. But he's battling away with Jakob Bukhava at the moment. The two Danes going at it for fourth and fifth. But James Shanes at the front. Starting the defence of his Bantasia Championship absolutely perfectly here as Kenneth Hansen pushes Jakob Bukhava wide to confirm his spot in that fourth place. So James Shanes 
leading away here with Zach Weitneck in that second place. Theo Piper in third, not making any ground on Zach Weitneck at the moment. So down the back straight for the final time and into that bottom turn, James Shane's number 93. Looking good at the moment here at the Bantasia Arena. Checker flags made ready. It's going to be James Shane who takes the win. Zach Fight next second. Theo Piper third. Kenneth Cruz Hansen finishes fourth. It's fifth place will be oh, it's close between these two. It looks like Jakob Bukhava has finished fifth ahead of Jake Mulford and Alfie Botel in seventh. So the results of race five, sponsored by the Stella Despatch, the Elite Solos. It was a win for number 93, James Shanes. Second place, number 109, Zach Weitnick. Third place, number 115, Theo Piper. Fourth place, number 333, Kenneth Cruz Hansen. Fifth place, number 79, Jakob Bukhava. Sixth place, number 72, Jake Mulford. And seventh place, number 202, Alfie Botel. And the winning time, very close to Chad Wurzfeld's, 105.44. 105.44, very, very close times between the two elite solos. So race six, sponsored by Team Palmer Racing. And we've got the open 500 solos coming to the line now. No Dave Mears in gate four. And uh, Aaron Butcher, of course, not going in this class. So his place taken by Nigel Coates in gate five. No Harry Gent in gate seven and no Stuart Mears in gate eight, but we do have Steve Tideswell coming in for James Peters out of gate 10. So away they go and it's a brilliant start for Ryan Ashcroft. He's flown off the start as they go into the turn. It's Graham Brown in that second place who quickly goes past. Jason Prynne goes straight through the pair of them and it is Jason Prynne who leads. Graham Brown in second, Ryan Ashcroft plugging away on the inside. Nigel Coates is in that fourth place at the moment, but Jason Prynne, just like I said before, he's looking very quick around here. No answer to him for Graham Brown in that second place. So Ryan Ashcroft, he's come past Graham Brown, coming past us, so a good ride by Ryan Ashcroft, but he's now gone wide. Allow Graham Brown back up the inside, but it is Ryan Ashcroft in that second place. He's gone back around the outside of Graham Brown. So that's a good ride by Ryan Ashcroft in that second place. So last lap flag then, it's one more lap to go for Jason Prynne. A solid ride this for the Cornishman. Ryan Ashcroft has now established himself in that second place ahead of Graham Brown in third. It's Nigel Coates riding well in that fourth place at the moment. And a battle between Daniel Broughton and Steve Tideswell for fifth and sixth. But a win, a good win for Jason Prynne in his opening ride. Second place to Ryan Ashcroft. Third place, Graham Brown, ahead of Nigel Coates in fourth. Close on the line for fifth, sixth and seventh is Daniel Broughton, fifth. Steve Tidewell, seventh. Dave Hollingsby in eighth. So the results of race six, sponsored by Team Palmer Racing. It was a win for number 25, Jason Prynne. Second place, number 45, Ryan Ashcroft. Third place, number three, Graham Brown. Fourth place, number seven, Nigel Coates. Fifth place, number 15, Daniel Broughton. Sixth place, number, number four, Steve Tideswell. Seventh place, number five, David Hollingsby. And the winning time, 116.41. So, race seven. We've got no Finn Lohe during gate three. He, of course, is going in the uh, elite class. And Morton Quiscard, similarly, in gate nine, is replaced by Barry Coates. Other than that, we are as per programme for this one. We should have nine solos on the line over there. So away they go. Race number seven, sponsored by SBS Epos. And leading into the turn is Wayne Broadhurst, number 158. He's chased in there, though. Somebody's fallen as they go in. That's Paul Bowen that's fallen in the middle of the turn. Hopefully he picks himself up. Through all the melee though, it's Will Thurlby who's got himself into that second. Liam Ashcroft in third. Good to see Paul Bowens up, but he's pushing into the middle, so he doesn't look like he's going to finish this one. That's a shame because he started really well there. But Wayne Broadhurst at the front, controlling this race. Ahead of Will Thurlby in second. Good battle going on for fifth, sixth and seventh at the moment. Tim Kernock's now got onto the back of Liam Ashcroft for that third as well. Lots of dicing going on at the back of the field between Barry Coates 
Dean Cutler, Jordan Knoll and Luke Tuck at the back. They're all desperate to try and make up the minor placings. So last lap flag then, Wayne Broadhurst, one more lap to go. Could he be the one to put a stop to Jason Brin? Now Tim Kernock's put in a great lap because he's gone from fourth to second and now he's chasing after Wayne Broughter. So he's coming on strong at the end of this race. Tim Kernock in that second place. He's not going to have time to get anywhere near Wayne Broughter. So he takes the win. Tim Kernock second. Will Felby finishes in third. And Liam Ashcroft fourth. So the results of race seven, sponsored by SBS EPOS. It was a win for number 158, Wayne Broadhurst. Second place, number 726, Tim Kernock. Third place, number 47, Will Thelby. Fourth, number 83, Liam Ashcroft. Fifth place, number 77, Barry Coates. Sixth place, number 57, Dean Cutler. Seventh place, number 89, Luke Tuck. Eighth place, number 95, Jordan Knoll. No ninth finisher. The winning time, 116.56. 1 minute 16.56. So, race eight, back to three wheels. Sponsored by Vince Stone Window Glazing. You can see the details in there. For Vince, old and new sidecars, leg number one. And we are as per programme. As far as I know, Liam Brown and Frankie Courtney off the inside. Liam having won his opening ride as a passenger in the 1,000 sidecars. Herman and Alan Paul off of gate two. Brian Hatch and Lou Wharton, three. Mark Courtney and Leon Torres off of gate four. Chris Tyrrell and Willow Jeffrey, gate five. And Paul Nelson and Lewis Wharton off the outside here. So, the first time to see the budget class sidecars this afternoon. And away they go. And it's a good start from Brian Hatch in the middle, number 69. He's made a great start. But it's Mark Courtney that leads into the first turn. They're close into the first turn. Very close in the first turn between those front two, but it's Mark Courtney and Leon Torres who lead. Brian Hatch in that second place, Liam Brown in third, Chris Tyrrell in the fourth place at the moment. So at the moment, all of the positions established. I'm keeping an eye on Liam Brown, who's trying to build up speed. I think it's all about keeping, maintaining the speed on these machines. You don't want them sliding too much. They just don't have the power, and he's much, much quicker into the pit corner, Liam Brown. He's mounted a challenge around the outside of Brian Hatch. He's gone very, very wide, and he's had to slow up, but he's definitely building speed in that third place. He won't want to start his afternoon with a third place. He'll want to keep the pressure on Mark Courtney. Points all the way through the day in this class. The winning riders will be the ones who have scored the most points through the day. Liam Brown's changed tact in that third place. He's now tucked up the inside. Brian Hatch is exactly where Liam Brown wants to be. If he's going to have to go past him, he's going to have to go round him, I think, because Brian and Lou are doing a great job at staying on the inside line. Know their way around this circuit, of course. They are the track curators. Had a lot to do with building this circuit. Check a flag out for Mark Courtney and Leon Torres. A good win for them. Brian Hatch and Lou Wharton second. Liam Brown third, Chris Tyrrell will finish fourth, Paul Nelson in fifth, and Herman Paul will finish in sixth place. So the results of race eight, sponsored by Vince Stone Window and Glazing. It was a win for number 72, Mark Courtney and Leon Torres. Second place, number 69, Brian Hatch and Lou Wharton. Third place, number three, that is Liam Brown and Frankie Courtney. Fourth place, number 169, Chris Tyrrell and Willow Jeffrey. Fifth place, number 181, Paul Nelson and Lewis Wharton. And sixth place, number 38, Herman and Alan Paul. Winning time, 132.28. 132.28. And now we turn our attention for the first time to the 250cc solo class. And we've got some very young, up and coming riders who are incredibly quick here in this class today. So we're intrigued to know how Ace Piper goes off the outside. It's his debut on the grass track this afternoon. He's a very good speedway rider. Made his debut as an adult just this week with a paid 10, I believe, on the speedway. So very quick on the speedway. Let's see how he gets on number 696 off of gate 10. There's plenty of quick riders out there with him. It is Ace Piper who makes a tremendous start off the outside. Chris still has gone with him and Mark Woods is there in third. So close into the turn. As somebody's taken a heavy fall as they go into that turn. I think that was Chris Malone who's fallen heavily. The red flag is out. The red flags are out, the race will be stopped. 
Chris Malone already on his knees. That's really good to see because that was quite a heavy fall for Chris. So away we go with race nine, the 250 solos. Into the turn they go, it's Chris Still that leads this time. Ben Phillips has put an Ace Piper under tremendous pressure for that second place. And Ace Piper has gone very, very wide after that move. But it's Chris Still who leads then. Ben Phillips, problems for Ben Phillips. Problems for Ace Piper as well as he goes past us. I think it was a very tough first turn. But look at the lead Chris Still has made up as he goes down that back straight. Second, third and fourth have all fallen all over each other in the Chris Mackett on the outside, I think that's Tim Grigg, is it? It's coming past that, it's Mark Woods, of course, who was in that second, but he's been overtaken by Adam Hawker. Mark Woods goes back around the outside of Adam Hawker, going into the pit turn. And there's a squabble between fifth and sixth as well, between Austin Riches and Jake Breeze, but at the front, Chris Dill looking very, very quick. He's got a tremendous lead on that two-stroke machine. Adam Hawker in second, he's fighting still with Mark Woods. It's a brilliant battle for this second place. Chris Mackett keeping a keen eye on what's going on in front of him. Any mistakes that are made, he'll be there. Mark Woods has gone round the outside of Adam Hawker now in that second place. But once again, Hawker's just got enough. Checker flag for Chris Still. He goes by us winning the first race. Adam Hawker finishes second ahead of Mark Woods. Chris Mackett fourth. Austin Rich is fifth. Jake Breeze fifth, or is Austin Rich is fifth? Head of Ace Piper and Jake Breeze. Very close between the minor placings. So the results of race nine, sponsored by Team Palmer Racing, was a win for number 76, Chris Still. Second place, number 50, Adam Hawker. Third place, number 24, Mark Woods. Fourth, number 68, Chris Mackett. Fifth place, number 46, Austin Riches. Sixth place, number 696, Ace Piper. Seventh place, number 40, Jake Breeze. And the winning time, 117.69. 117.69. So, race 10, sponsored by Brian Bassett. No Phil Thomas in this one out of gate six. His place taken by 413, Chris Simmons. But we should have 10 on the line. And away they go. And it is Tim Grigg who makes a flying start as they go off that start. Cameron Taylor follows him in there ahead of Luke Harris in that third. Watch for them to go round the outside. That's exactly what they've done. And it's Cameron Taylor that leads. Luke Harris second. Tim Grigg in that third. Sam Norris has got himself into that fourth. Whole gag of the riders in fifth. So Cameron Taylor ahead of Luke Harris at the moment. Can Luke Harris do anything about that? He really is a talent, Cameron Taylor. Sam Norris is now trying to go around the outside of Tim Grigg for that third. But Tim Grigg's very quick on the inside. He's a quick inside rider, Tim Grigg. He'll try and keep Sam Norris at bay, but Sam Norris has now got himself into that third place. So at the front, Luke Harris, he's still within striking distance of Cameron Taylor. Cameron Taylor will not be able to let up at all. One more lap to ha hang on. Sam Norris now established in that third place. So into the final turn for the final time for Cameron Taylor in this race. He's going to take a win. The defence of his Bantasia title begins perfectly. He takes a win. Luke Harris second. Third place will be Sam Norris. Fourth place to Tim Brick. Carl Beddingfield finishes fifth ahead of Jordan Derrick, Kenzie Cossey, Lee Bassett and Richie Knight. So the results of race 10, sponsored by Brian Bassett. It was a win for number 101, Cameron Taylor. Second place, number 26, Luke Harris. Third place, number seven, Sam Norris. Fourth place, number 10, Tim Grigg. Fifth place, number 73, Carl Beddingfield. Sixth place, number 247, Jordan Derrick. Seventh place, number 22, Kenzie Cossey. Eighth place, number three, Lee Bassett. Ninth place, number 229, Richie Knight. And tenth place, number 413, Chris Simmons. And the winning time, 1 minute 12.85. 1 minute 12.85. So we've now got a demonstration four laps from Max Perry. Max is already a world champion. He was world youth champion. And he is a very, very quick grass track rider. Very quick speedway rider as well. Makes his adult debut 
very, very soon, I believe, on the speedway. We would have loved him to have been in the lineup for Bantasia on the 250s. But as it is, he's just two weeks away from 15. So 14-year-old Max Perry. Looking very, very quick as he goes into that turn. We have got the clock on Max Perry. We'll find out just how his time compares. So one more high speed lap for Max Perry. The 14 year old wonder kid. I wonder what he's gonna come up with when he does it indeed go into the adults later on this season. We really are looking forward to seeing him racing against the men around the turn for the final time. It's all good practice for him, of course. Checkered flag. There we go. So Max managed to go round in one minute 14.75. One minute 14.75, so very competitive compared to the other results as well so he's not hanging about max perry and i'm sure you agree that he is a very talented youngster and we've also got steen piper coming out for four laps and steen quite a bit younger than max Obviously enjoying his ride on the grass, goes very wide coming out here. Everyone gasps a little bit on this side. <laughs> Luckily he's got it all under control. So, Steen Piper gaining some valuable experience on the grass track bike. And we're sure we'll see him in years to come racing on the grass as well. So, back to the racing. Race number 11, sponsored by Isle of Wight Shale Track Racing Club. And coming out in race 11, we've got Robbie Simmons and Wayne Rickards out of gate one to change a passenger for Robbie. He came second in his first ride. Anthony Sales and Michael Topman in gate two. Kieran Hicks and Kieran Ivey out of gate three. Mark Costa and Gareth Williams in four. George Penfold and Danny Hill five. And Terry Saunters, after that great first heat win, they are in gate six. So can they maintain that? They've certainly got some quick riders up against them in this one. So away we go, there's a huge wheel stand off the line for Anthony Sales. But it's Mark Costa who leads. Terry Saunters in that second place. Robbie Simmons follows them in in third. George Penfold tucks up the inside of Robbie Simmons. But it is Robbie Simmons in that third place getting filled in by Terry Saunters. So Mark Costa and Gareth Williams, they've certainly got the problem solved that hampered them in their first ride. Terry Saunters in that second place at the moment. Good to see that Anthony Sales got things sorted out and he's going once again. But at the front, Mark Costa and Gareth Williams, look at their speed as they come out of that turn. Absolutely pinning the throttle. Robbie Simmons has got a bit closer, I think, to Terry Saunters in that second and third place. Definitely closed the gap as Terry Saunters loses a bit of drive coming off that back straight in second place and Robbie Simmons is definitely closer. 
Last lap flag then for Mark Costa. One more lap to go, but Robbie Simmons is all over Terry Saunders in this second place now. That's definitely where the change is going to be if there is one. Terry Saunders has drifted wide. Robbie Simmons is tight up the inside. But he slows on the back straight. I think the bike just unsettled itself a little bit. And I think Terry might just about cling on to that second place, but it's Mark Costa who takes the win. Terry Saunders second. Robbie Simmons third. George Penfold in fourth. Kieran Hicks fifth. And Anthony Sales will finish in sixth place. So the results of race 11, sponsored by Isle of Wight Shale Track Racing Club. It was a win for number 37, Mark Cosser and Gareth Williams. Second place, number 24, Terry Saunters and Liam Brown. Third place, number nine, Robbie Simmons and Wayne Rickards. Fourth place, number 124, George Penfold and Danny Hill. Fifth place, number 78, Kieran Hicks and Kieran Ivey. And sixth place, number 778, Anthony Sales and Michael Topman. And a winning time, 1 minute 20.91. 1 minute 20.91, the fastest time so far in the sidecars. And we move to race number 12, sponsored by One Estates. Will Offen and Ricky Pay out of one this time. They had a third first time out. Clint Blondell and Jordan Smith hampered with problems with that chain going in their first one. Stacey Stell and Chris Townsend are not here in that gate three. They are replaced by Dave Buckley and Steve Smith. And Simon Heal, of course, a non-starter in gate four. They are replaced by Dale Fish and Jordan Fish. Michael Austin and Vinnie Branch out of five. Neil Owen and Jason Farwell out of gate six. So no first heat winners in this one. So there's a chance for somebody to make an impression on the leaders. So, tapes up then on this race 12, away they all go, it's an even start, it's near low in from the outside though, he leads into the turn, followed by Michael Austin in that second, Dale Fish has made a good start, and has got himself into third, but he's quickly challenged by Will Offen and Ricky Pay, who go past Dale Fish for that third place. So, near low and Jason Farwell, leading the way comfortably here ahead of Michael Austin. Clint Lodell's now got past Dale Fish and gone into fourth. He throws the machine sideways in that fourth place. And Dale Fish comes back up the inside of him. So the battle raging for fourth and fifth at the moment. It's much more clear cut at the front because Neil Owen is absolutely flying on that V-twin. Gordon. Michael Austin has now got Will Offen and Ricky Payne all over the back of him as they go into this bottom turn. Will Offen has gone wide. He's coming tight. He's going to try and tuck up the inside. But there's no gap available. Clint Blondell's now gone through for that fourth once again. So the last lap flag then, Neil Owen, one more lap to go. But really this second place, Dale Fish completely sideways exit the turn. Michael Austin in that second, but Will Offen's now up the inside of him. It's close in that second place. He's got past him, a great move by Will Offen to get up the inside. He now goes into second. Will Michael Austin come back at him in this pit turn? Neil Owen takes the win, but I'm keeping my eye on this second place. It's going to be second for Will Offen, a great ride for that second place. Michael Austin third, Glyn Blondell fourth, Dale Fish fifth. So race 12, the 1,000cc sidecar sponsored by One Estates. It was a win for number 12, Neil Owen and Jason Farwell. Second place, number 80, Will Offen and Ricky Pay. Third place, number 991, Michael Austin and Vinnie Branch. Fourth place, number 10, Glyn Blondell and Jordan Smith. Fifth place, number 20, Dale and Jordan Fish. And sixth place, number 40, Dave Buckley and Steve Smith. The winning time, 1 minute 22.31. 1 minute 22.31. And we move on to race 13, sponsored by Palm Court Hotel, Shanklin. And coming out of gate one, first heat winners, Trevor Heath and Sam Heath. And coming out of six, first heat winners, Paul Whitelam and Richard Webb. And they will be joined by Will Penfold and Bradley Reynolds, who had problems in their first ride. Joe Sturtridge and Sean Hoskin in gate three. Matthew Marola, who had a quiet race in his opening ride. Can he do something about that this time? Paul Johnson and Ben Schofield had a good second place in their first ride. Can they build on that in this one? So away they go, it's a much better start for Matt Fumarola this time. It's Trevor Heath who leads into the turn though. Paul Whitelam has followed him in there, as has Matt Fumarola. They're all together in the turn and Paul Whitelam emerges in the lead. A great first turn from Paul Whitelam. He goes through into the lead. Matt Fumarola's fought his way into that second place. Trevor Heath's in the third and Will Penfold's in that fourth place. So, can anyone do anything about Paul Whitelam? He looks very fast at the front. 
Matt Fimrola has got Trevor Heath all over the back of him and he's pushed him on to Paul Whitelam. So Paul Whitelam and Richard Webb out in front once again for the second time this afternoon. Matt Fimrola is holding Trevor Heath at bay. At the moment, this is a good ride from Matt Fimrola and Andy Wilson in that second place. And Paul Whitelam has gone very wide and Matt Fimrola has gone up the inside. He's gone very, very wide. They almost come together as they come out of that turn. He completely missed the corner, Paul Whitelam going in there. I'm not sure what happened. He completely missed the corner and Fumarola was nearly able to capitalise. Will he make the same mistake this time as they approach the bend once more? He's much, much tighter into the turn this time, but Trevor Heat's now very close in that third place. They've all got close at the end of this race, but I think Paul Whitelam's going to have enough. He just needs to ride this last corner sensibly. Out of the turn he comes. It's going to be a win for Paul Whitelam and Richard Ware. Matthew Morella second, Trevor Heath third. Will Penfold finishes fourth. Paul Johnson will finish fifth and Joe Sturtridge sixth. So race 13, sponsored by Palm Court Hotel Shanklin. It was a win for number 92, Paul Whitelam and Richard Webb. Second place, number 15, Matt Fumarola and Andy Wilson. Third place, number 191, Trevor Heath and Sam Heath. Fourth place, number 22, Will Penfold and Bradley Reynolds. Fifth place, number seven, Paul Johnson and Ben Schofield. Sixth place, number 13, Joe Sturtridge and Sean Hoskin. The winning time, 122.94, 122.94. So, back to the Elite Solo, sponsored by Stella Dispatch in race 14. We have got Danish Moon, Jakob Bukhava in gate one, Tony Atkin in gate two, first heat winner James Shane's in three, Morton Quisgard comes in gate four, no gate seven, no gate eight, Jake Morford in gate nine, and Aaron Butcher off the outside in gate number 10 as the tapes go up on race 14. Jake Morford's made a good start, as has James Shane's and Jakob Bukhava, but it is Shane's who leads into the turn. Jake Mulford turns the machine, he's fallen in the turn, as has Jakob Bukhava. They all come together as they come in that turn. They look like they're fine. And we've got a red flag over on the back straight. So, in fact, we've got a red flag from the clerk of the course. So the race will be stopped. In the interest of safety, I'm just having a look at Jakob. I think Jake Mulford had the machine completely sideways and they just came together. I'm not sure what happened. Both up and okay there, that's the main thing. The riders coming back into line. Bukhava, Atkin, Shanes, Chris Gard, Mulford and Butcher. Just the six riders in this one. So away we go and it's another good start for Jake Mulford and Jakob Bukhav has gone with him. James Shanes is much quicker into the turn and he leads by the time they get to the first turn. Mulford's going around the outside once again, but it's James Shanes who leads. Jake Mulford's in that second, but he's right on his tail as they go into that turn. He's not letting him go. Tony Atkins fought his way into that third place ahead of Jakob Bukhav, but James Shanes leads. Jake Mulford now has backed off a little bit, but he fought him into that turn. Now Jakob Bukhava has got through into that third. A chain guard has come off in front of us and Jakob Bukhava has collected it as he's gone past, but luckily it's not stopped his progress. So James Shanes, the last lap flag. These races are very, very quick. He takes the last lap flag ahead of Jake Mulford. Bukhava looks like he's got the better of Tony Atkin now for that third place. Aaron Butcher in fifth and Morton Quisgard somewhere in sixth. He's just gone out very wide around this turn. But it's going to be a win for James Shanes. He takes in a huge wheel stand as he comes past us. Jake Mulford second. Third place will be Jakob Bukhava. Tony Atkin fourth. Fifth place will be Aaron Butcher. So the results of race number 14. It was a win for number 93, James Shanes. Second of the afternoon. Second place, number 72, Jake Mulford. Third place, number 79, Jakob Bukhava. Fourth place, number 10, Tony Atkin. Fifth place, number 20, Aaron Butcher. Sixth place, number 412, Morton Quisgard. The winning time, 105.16. 105.16, that's the fastest four laps that anyone has produced so far. Race 15 then, sponsored by Stella Despatch. We've got Kenneth Hansen coming out of gate one. Chad Wurzfeld, the first heat winner in gate two. Alfie Botel in gate three. No Ryan Kinsley, of course. We've got Finn Lohida from Germany in gate four. Theo Piper in gate seven. 
Paul Cooper in gate eight, Zach Weitnecht in gate nine, and Daniel Winterton, gate 10, in a very competitive looking race 15. So away they go, and it's a good start from Zach Weitnecht. He leads going down the back straight. Chad Wurzfeld's there too. Paul Cooper is the one that's challenging Zach Weitnecht on the outside line. They all come together in the exit of the turn. Gone very, very wide. It's Weitnecht who leads though. Chad Wurzfeld's in that second. They're all together for third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And it's Hansen on the inside. It's somebody going round the outside. I think that's Theo Piper going round the outside as they go around that turn. So Zach Weitnecht. A comfortable lead here ahead of Chad Wurzfeld. Theo Piper's on the outside, plugging away at Kenneth Hansen in that fourth place. Paul Cooper's very comfortable in that third. So the battle really for fourth and fifth at the moment between Hansen and Theo Piper. As the last lap flag is out for Zach Whitenick, a brilliant ride by him. Piper and Hansen are right together as they come past us, and now Theo Piper goes up the inside of Kenneth Hansen going into the pit turn and chases after Paul Cooper. So the chequered flag is made ready. It's going to be a win and a first for the afternoon for Zach Weitner. He takes the win. Chad Wurzfeld finishes second. Third place to Paul Cooper. T.O. Piper fourth. Fifth place, Kenneth Hansen. Sixth place, Daniel Winterton. Alfie Botow in seventh. And Finn Lohinger finishing in eighth. So the results of race 15 and very competitive times once again. It was a win for number 109, Zach Weitner. Second place, number 69, Chad Wurzfeld. Third place, number 11, Paul Cooper. Fourth place, number 115, Theo Piper. Fifth place, number 333, Kenneth Cruz Hansen. Sixth place, number 12, Daniel Winterton. Seventh, number 202, Alfie Botel. And eighth place, number 66, Finn Lohider. And the winning time, 105.38, 105.38. So literally hundreds of a second between them at the moment. So race 16, sponsored by Team Palmer Racing. It is the Open 500 solos. We've got Ryan Ashcroft, Tim Kernock, Steve Tideswell in replacement of James Peters, number four. Number 77, Barry Coates in replacement of Morton Quiscard. And problems on the line as somebody breaks the tapes. So a tape infringement over there. The rider getting a warning for, for touching the tapes. Number 25, Jason Prynn. Uh, away they go, it doesn't seem to have slowed him down because he's made a great start, Jason Prince. Tim Carnock has gone after him. I'm looking for Wayne Broadhurst, he's there in third. But Jason Prynne very, very wide as he comes out this turn. Will one of the riders be able to cut the inside? In fact, there's a problem for Jason Prynne. That bike sounds very sick as he goes past us. So once again, problems for Jason Prynne who goes back around the outside of people. He's picked up a little bit of speed, but that bike definitely doesn't look right. Meanwhile, at the front, Wayne Broadhurst has gone past Tim Kernock for the lead. And Tim Kernock's now pulled out. So well, nobody wants to win this race. Ryan Ascroft's now in second. And he'll chase after Wayne Broadhurst. Steve Tideswell at the moment leads that battle in third. So Ryan Ascroft and Wayne Broadhurst at the front. Steve Tideswell comes through into that third place. And the last lap flag is made ready. Wayne Broadhurst ahead of Ryan Ascroft. Steve Tideswell, Barry Coates and Luke Tuck all over each other for this third, fourth and fifth. Jason Prince still plugging on despite all those problems with the machine. Look how close this third place battle is. They're absolutely together, those three riders. It's going to be close on the line for the win because they've caught right up. It's Ryan Ascroft, I think, right on the line ahead of Wayne Broadhurst. Barry Coates wins that battle for third. Look how close they are for fourth, fifth and sixth. Absolutely together. So a very close race 16, sponsored by Team Palmer Racing. Lots of positions to sort out with the lap scorers in here, but it was a win for number 45, Ryan Ashcroft. Second place, number 158, Wayne Broadhurst. Third place, number 77, Barry Coates. Fourth place, number 25, Jason Prynn. Fifth place, number four, Steve Tideswell. Sixth place, number 89, Luke Tuck. Seventh place, number 95, Jordan Noel. Winning time, one minute 17. 117.72. So race 17, sponsored by Essex Wheels and Engineering. We've got no Dave Mears out of gate two. Nigel Coates will come out of gate four. No Finn Lowheeder in gate five. But away they go. And it's an even break. It's Will Thelby who noses in front, but it's Graham Brown that leads into the turn. Dean Cutler's gone up the inside as well into that second place. 
and Paul Bowen this time negotiating the first turn. He comes up the inside. It's Paul Bowen that has a great first turn. He's now in that second place. But Graham Brown away at the front. Will Thurby's going round the outside of Dean Cutler. He goes back into third. They're squabbling away for third, fourth, fifth and sixth once again in this one. So Graham Brown ahead of Paul Bowen in this one. Great battle for fourth. It looks like Will Thurby's broken away from that battle. Nigel Coates is in fourth. Liam Ashcroft's going up the inside to try and take that fifth. But Dean Cutler knows his ahead once again. Now Liam Ashcroft goes through into fifth. So Paul Bowen has got right on the back wheel of Graham Brown at the late stage of this race. He's going to have a go at Graham Brown going into this pit corner. He's gone in a little bit wider than him. Good style from Paul Bowen as he slips wide coming off that turn. He's going to have a go at him on this last turn. Graham Brown's going to have to have eyes in the back of his head. Paul Bowen's gone on the outside. He's thrown the bike sideways. It's going to be close. Graham Brown's moved him wide. He must have heard him there. Graham Brown wins. Good ride from Graham Brown to defend that. Paul Bowen second. Will Thurby third, Nigel Coates fourth, Liam Ashcroft fifth. Close on the line between sixth, seventh and eighth once again. So the results of race 17, another entertaining 500 solo open race sponsored by Essex Wheels and Engineering. It was a win for number three, Graham Brown. Second place, number 67, Paul Bowen. Third place, number 47, Will Thalby. Fourth place, number seven, Nigel Coates. Fifth place, number 83, Liam Ashcroft. Sixth place, number 57, Dean Cutler. Seventh place, number 15, Daniel Broughton. Eighth place, number five, David Hollingsby. Winning time, one minute 16, exactly. One minute 16.00. Race 18, though, sponsored by Vintstone Window Glazing. Old and new sidecars. So away we go with race number 18, and it's Liam Brown this time who makes a great start. Mark Courtney's in that second place. Problems with the crews at the back, but it's Liam Brown and Frankie Courtney who lead. Mark Courtney then, he won the first ride. Is he going to be able to do anything about Liam Brown in this one? You can see he's already eyeing up that inside line as they come around this turn. He'll want Liam Brown to go into the corner a bit faster than he really wants to. Liam Brown then goes wide of the turn. Mark Courtney's got up the inside. They've come together in the middle of the corner, but Liam Brown just about leads still. Chris Tyrrell's in that third place at the moment. But Liam Brown and Frankie Courtney, they have got to stay on this inside line. As soon as they run off that inside line, Mark Courtney's going to be up the inside, waiting for a mistake. So down the back straight, back down the back straight they go and into the pit turn once again. Mark Courtney's definitely faster into the turn. He's definitely quicker. They've touched in the middle of the turn. Liam was a lot, lot slower into the turn and Mark Courtney caught up with him mid-turn. He's quicker into this one too. They come together again. Mark Courtney's gone by. They get very close on the exit of the turn. Mark Courtney's pushed him wide. He's got up the inside. So Mark Courtney leads once again. Brilliant ride by Mark Courtney and Leon Torres to get themselves back into the lead. They had to force the issue a little bit, but they take the win. Liam Brown finishes second. Third place will be Chris Tyrrell. Paul Nelson and Lou Wharton finish in fourth and Herman and Alan Paul finish fifth. So the results of race 18 sponsored by Vintstone Window Glazing. It was a win for number 72, Mark Courtney and Leon Torres. Second place, number three, that is Liam Brown and Frankie Courtney. Third place, number 169, Chris Tyrrell and Willow Jeffrey. Fourth place, number 181, Paul Nelson and Lou Wharton. And fifth place, number 38, Herman and Alan Paul. And the winning time, 1 minute 30.47. 1 minute 30.47. So back to the 250 solos for race 19, sponsored by TTL Sports Photography. Jake Breeze takes the place of Graham Thomas in gate one. No Aidan Arthur either in gate seven. That will be taken by Giles Dismore, number 82. And Phil Thomas, of course, number, uh, in gate 10, will be taken by number 413, Chris Simmons. So. Tim Grigg, Ace Piper, Sam Norris, Chris Still with that brilliant win. Yeah. Cameron Taylor also won in his first ride, so we've got both our heat winners coming together here. So away we go, and it is Cameron Taylor that leaps off the line, but Tim Grigg and Chris Still are there with him as they go into the turn. Cameron Taylor leads, Chris Still second, Tim Grigg third. Richie Knight's got himself into that fourth place, but Sam Norris is coming right round the outside of the pack. 
Ace Piper's in there as well against Richie Knight at the moment. They're all close together for that fifth place. Now Sam Norris goes through into fourth. Ace Piper comes through into fifth. So Cameron Taylor looking absolutely brilliant here. Really is looking peerless at the moment in this 250 class. One last weekend at Ledbury. Chris Steele and Tim Grigg are keenly battling away for that second place, but they've allowed Sam Norris to come up the inside of them. They've got, he's got much, much closer to them. So the last lap flag made ready then. Cameron Taylor looking good, looking smooth once again. Now Sam Norris is right on the back of this battle for second and third. And he goes wide into the pit corner to try and generate a bit of speed to try and make his way around the outside in that fourth place. He's got right up the side of Tim Grigg, but he's just about run out of speed. Can he do anything on this last turn? Cameron Taylor's going to take the win, that's for sure. Sam Norris goes right round the outside. He's just going to run out of room. It's fourth place for Sam Norris. Ace Piper fifth. Sixth place will be Jake Breeze. So the results of race 19, sponsored by TTL Sports Photography, it was a win for number 101, Cameron Taylor. Second place, number 76, Chris Still. Third place, number 10, Tim Grigg. Fourth place, number 7, Sam Norris. Fifth place, number 696, Ace Piper. Sixth place, number 40, Jake Breeze. Seventh place, number 229, Richie Knight. And eighth place, number 413, Chris Simmons. The winning time, 113.34, 113. So race 20, sponsored by Brian Bassett, and we have got Luke Harris coming out of gate one, Austin Riches in gate two, Lee Bassett gate three, Adam Hawker gate four, gate five is Kenzie Cossey, who is number 22, not 122, Ben Phillips, who we believe is riding a different number as well, we'll have to wait and see with Carl Benningfield, Chris Mackett is in gate eight in the place of Gary Cook, Jordan Derrick in gate nine and Mark Woods in gate 10. So we'll keep an eye on what number Ben Phillips is running. He's on a borrowed machine out there. So away they go then. And it is Carl Benningfield who leads into the turn. A great start from Carl Benningfield, but Luke Harris now nips ahead. Adam Hawkers right on the inside line. But it's Luke Harris who leads, Carl Benningfield in second. All together for that second place, it's Carl Benningfield at the moment, but Ben Phillips has roared round the outside and gone into that second place. A great ride by Ben Phillips in that second place. Mark Woods has found himself in that third, and Adam Hawker's now nipping up the inside as well. They're all together for this third place, fourth place. Mark Woods now is on the outside, and he goes tries to go round Carl Benningfield and Adam Hawker as they go to the turn. He's a little bit loose coming around that turn. So the front three places look to be, the front two places look to be secured. Just a bit confused by Chris Mackett there. So Chris Mackett, one of the tail enders at the back, problems early on in the race. But you can see he's quite quick, Chris Mackett, so he's causing Luke Harris a bit of trouble to get past. Not too much trouble though, because Luke Harris takes his first win of the afternoon. Ben Phillips comes home in second, close on the line for third, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh. So the results of race 20, sponsored by Brian Bassett. It was, it was a win for number 26, Luke Harris. Second place, number 34, Ben Phillips. Third place, number 50, Adam Hawker. Fourth place, number 73, Carl Beddingfield. Fifth place, number 24, Mark Woods. Sixth place, number 247, Jordan Derrick. Seventh place, number 22, Kenzie Cossey. Eighth place, number 46, Austin Riches. Ninth place, number three, Lee Bassett. And tenth place, number 68, Chris Mackett. And the winning time, 114.03. Now we've got our Max Perry demonstration once again.
So the super stylish Max Perry. Having another four laps here. Would have been fascinating to see him in that 250 class. We won't have to wait long to see him up against the adult 250s. Another very quick four laps for Max Perry. And Max's time, 115.44 this time. So once again, not far off. Not far off at all, those adult riders. 1,000 CC sidecars coming back onto the track for race 21, sponsored by Palm Court Hotel in Shanklin. And we have got Joe Sturtridge off of gate one, Matthew Marola and Andy Wilson off gate two. No Simon Heal, of course. We've got Dale and Jordan Fish filling that slot in gate three. Clint Blondell and Jordan Smith in gate four. Robbie Simmons and Wayne Rickards in gate five. And Mark Costa and Gareth Williams off the outside. At the moment, of course, the competition led by Paul Whitelam and the top six at the moment, the all important top six at the moment is Paul Whitelam, Neil Owen, Mark Cossa, Terry Saunters, Trevor Heath and Will Offen. But of course that can all change in this last set of heats. We've got Mark Cossa in this one. Matt Fumarola and Robbie Simmons are seventh and eighth at the moment. So they're both in this one. They need big points in this one if they want to make that A final. Joe Sturtridge is uh, on four points at the moment. So they're just waiting. It looks like the reserves coming out onto the circuit. So coming into this race then, Clint Blondell is not coming to the line. That's a real shame for Clint, but you can see that Dan Berwick, number 68, and his passenger Mark Hopkins have come in to fill that hole in gate number four. So we'll still have six outfits in there for this one. Dan Berwick's joining the lineup here in this third leg. So away they go, and it's a cracking start off the outside for Mark Costa and Gareth Williams. Robbie Simmons follows him in there, and Dale Fish once again making a great start as they all file in after him. Dale Fish slides wide, and Matthew Marola comes up the inside for that third place. So Mark Costa and Gareth Williams, they had a problem in their first ride. They won their second ride, and they are looking very quick once again in this third ride. Robbie Simmons and Wayne Rickards once again in amongst the points. They need good points, these second and third place crews, if they want to get into that A final. So Matt Fumarola and Andy Wilson, they'll desperately want to find a way past Robbie Simmons one way or another. They need those points, they really do, because they know that four might not be enough in that third place. But Robbie Simmons at the moment looking quick enough. The last lap flag comes out then for Mark Cossa and Gareth Williams, absolutely flying as they come out this turn. Dale Fish having a good ride in that fourth place. So round the pit bend for the final time for Mark Cossa and Gareth Williams. Another comfortable win for the reigning British Masters champion. He takes the win. Robbie Simmons does hold on to that second place. Valuable five points for him. Matt Fumarola third. Dale Fish will finish in fourth. Joe Startridge fifth. Dan Berwick in sixth. So the results of race 21, another incredibly fast race time from Mark Cossa. Number 37 is the winner. Second place, number nine, Robbie Simmons and Wayne Rickards. Third place, number 15, Matt Fumarola and Andy Wilson. Fourth place, number 20, Dale Fish and Jordan Fish. Fifth place, number 13, Joe Sturtridge and, J and Sean Hoskin. And sixth place, number 68, Dan Berwick and Mark Hopkins. And the winning time, that very fast time, 1 minute 20.07. So, race 22, sponsored by One Estates. Coming to the line in race 22, we have got Will Penfold and Bradley Reynolds in gate one. Anthony Sales and Michael Topman, gate two. Michael Austin and Vinnie Branch offer three. The unbeaten crew of Paul Whiteland and Richard Webb in gate four. Terry Saunters and Liam Brown, who have had a win and a second in gate five. And Trevor Heath, who's been in amongst the points with a win and a third. He's in gate six. Now the tapes go up, away they go, it's another wheel stand for Anthony Sales, but it's Terry Saunders that leads as he goes that turn. Trevor Heath follows him in there, Michael Austin's in there in third. Will Penfold's tucked up the inside and Paul Whitelam's right at the back. So the unbeaten Paul Whitelam has got his work cut out here because he's in fifth place going back into the pit corner. What is he going to be able to do about that? Terry Saunters at the front looking very, very quick. Trevor Heath in that second place. Paul Whitelam's now working away at Will Penfold. He comes up the inside hard on Will Penfold into the turn. 
Now Paul Whiteland's in that fourth, and he'll start to work his way towards Michael Austin in that third place. So, at the front, Terry Saunters and Liam Brown looking good in this one, but Trevor Heath's come up the inside. Trevor Heath's got a very quick inside line off this turn. He's now right on Terry Saunters as they go in this turn. They are very close for first and second. Trevor Heath's got a bit of drive on that back straight. He's got a bit between his teeth here. Trevor Heath pushing Terry Saunters in that turn. He cannot go wide and Trevor Heath's right on the inside. They've got one more lap to sort it out because Terry Saunters and Trevor Heath are completely locked together. Problems for Paul Whitelam in that fourth, but at the front, Terry Saunters and Trevor Heath, this is gonna go down to this last turn. Terry Saunters, he's got to keep it in, he's got to keep it tight. Trevor Heath's got it even tighter, it's gonna be a win for Terry Saunters. Trevor Heath second, Michael Austin finishes. He's thrown a chain as he goes past us, in fact, it's very close as he come past us. The chain going off the back of Michael Austin, I think he just clung on to third. Drama in race 22. Absolute drama. So, race 22, sponsored by One Estates, was a win for number 24, Terry Saunters and Liam Brown. Second place, number 191, Trevor and Sam Heath. Third place, number 991, just holding on to it, Michael Austin and Vinnie Branch. Fourth place, number 92, Paul Whiteland and Richard Webb. Fifth place, number 22, Will Penfold and Bradley Reynolds. And sixth place, number 778, Anthony Sales and Michael Topman. And the winning time, 1 minute 21.28. 1 minute 21.28. Race 23 then, sponsored by Team Palmer Racing. The third leg, the final qualifying ride for the 1,000cc sidecars. And we've got George Penfold and Danny Hill in gate one. Paul Johnson and Ben Schofield in gate two. They had a good opening ride. And another good ride here could get them into that final. Neil Owen and Jason Farwell in gate three. A brilliant win for them earlier on. No Stacey Stell, of course. The place in gate four taken by Dave Buckley and Steve Smith. Kieran Hicks and Kieran Ivey in gate five and Will Offen and Ricky Pay gate six. So we've got a lot of riders here once again on the cusp who need good rides in this one to try and get into that A final. We know that Mark Coss is going to be there. We know that Terry Saunders is going to be there. We more or less know that Trevor Heath's going to be there given the points that they've scored. So, six outfits on the line once again for race 23. And away we go. It's a good start on the inside for George Penfold this time. He's flown off the start. But it's Kieran Hicks and Kieran Ivey who lead into the turn. It's a close first turn. All three outfits coming together there. And Paul Johnson's capitalised. He's gone up the inside. That was a very tough first turn. And in fact, we've lost a passenger on the back straight as well. All sorts of drama and the red flags have gone out. George Penfold was leading. George Penfold now comes infield as well. But the red flags go out and we stop. <laughs> Lots of action there. It's hard to keep up with what was going on. We had a good start for George Penfold on the inside. We had all of them clashing together in that first turn. Kieran Hicks basically got sandwiched between two outfits in the first turn. Then Dave Buckley decided to throw his passenger off going down the back straight. George Penfold's then gone infield coming around this turn in the pit corner. Kieran Hicks has pulled up over the other side. I'd imagine his bike's about three inches narrower now. Will Offen's there, Paul Johnson's there, Neil Owen's there. Just the three outfits, so no George Penfold and no Kieran Hicks. So, big points on offer for these three now as they leave the line. It's a very even start into the first turn they go it's Neil Owen who leads Paul Johnson right on the inside as they go into that turn Will Offen now in that third place so Paul Johnson picks up lots of drive on the back straight and Will Offen gets back on terms with him but Paul Johnson pushes him wide he keeps himself in that second place he's pushed Will Offen very very wide Neil Owen's at the front but Paul Johnson's still on that inside line Will Offen still not got by they've got together in the middle of the turn now Will Offen gets himself a bit of space in that second place but Paul Johnson will still be scoring good points in that third place. So, Neil Owen and Jason Farwell looking home and dry in this one. Will Offen in that second place. Had to work hard for that second place, but he's looking good now he's there. Paul Johnson looks like he's struggling with that machine. It's driving very hard. So, last lap flag then. Neil Owen and Jason Farwell. The flying Welshman. Will Offen's gone very wide on this straight over here. Yeah. 
So I think for the first time this afternoon, we haven't had a top a six rider start. Neil Owen takes a win. Will often finishes second. Paul Johnson will pick up valuable points for third. So the results, nice and easy this time of race 23, sponsored by Team Palmer Racing. It was a win for number 12, Neil Owen and Jason Farwell, booking his place into that A final. Second place, number 80, Will Offen and Ricky Pay. Third place, number seven, Paul Johnson and Ben Schofield. And the winning time, 121.44, 121.44. So race 24, sponsored by Stella Dispatch, will be coming to the line next. No Charlie Powell in gate one. Paul Cooper will be in gate two. No Ryan Kinsney, of course, his place taken by Finn Lowheeder in gate three. Zach Weitnick in gate four. Jake Mulford out of seven. Aaron Butcher will be in gate eight. Morton Griscard in gate nine. And Alfie Botel out of gate 10. So they are lined up ready for this race 24. Tapes up, away they go, it's a good start by Alfie Botel this time, he's gone well away off the start, but it's Zach Weitnack who leads, Paul Cooper's in that second place, Alfie Botel's gone very wide into the turn, he's been forced even wider as he come round and he's fallen on the green grass, and another bike has fallen as well at the back, so, problems for two of our riders at the back, I think that's Morton Quisgard that's gone out there with Alfie Botel, and the red flags have come out because the bikes are in that runoff area, so I think Alfie getting pushed very, very wide. Chris Gard seeing that Alfie was on the floor made sure that he threw the machine to the floor as well. So I'll wait confirmation from the clerk of the course, but I'd imagine that uh, he's more than happy to have all the riders back given that it was a very close first turn. So we are back ready for race 24, sponsored by Stella Despatch. Away we go, Zach Voitnick made a great start in the first one. He's made another good start this time and he leads into the turn. Paul Cooper's there once again in that second place. And Alfie Botel this time in third. So Jake Mulford's come up the inside, he's gone past two of them. Brilliant first turn by Jake Mulford and he goes roaring past Paul Cooper going into that turn and now he's chasing after Zach Voitnick. So this is a good ride for Jake Mulford in the early part of this race. So, Zach Weitnecht, he'll be looking over behind his shoulder. He knows that Jake Mulford's there. He'll be able to hear him. Now Jake Mulford goes back around the outside. He's gone past him into this turn. A great ride by Jake Mulford as he goes sweeping by Zach Weitnecht. But Weitnecht comes again down the back straight. They're together into the turn and Zach Weitnecht goes back in front. Paul Cooper's watching this battle with intrigue in that third place. Waiting for a mistake, but Zach Weitnecht now pulled away a little bit. And Jake Mulford looks to be tiring a little bit because Paul Cooper's now come back on terms of him. And the once race leader might even lose his second place here because Paul Cooper's gone roaring around the outside of Jake Mulford into this turn. Zach Fight next, definitely going to win it, but it's going to be close to the line. It's Paul Cooper for second. Jake Mulford finishes up third. Fourth place is going to be close. It's Aaron Butcher for fourth. Botel fifth. So the results of race 24, it was a win for number 109, Zach Weitnick, but he was made to work for it. Second place, number 11, Paul Cooper. Third place, number 72, Jake Mulford. Fourth place, number 20, Aaron Butcher. Fifth place, number 202, Alfie Botel. And sixth place, number 66, Finn Lowheeder. No other finishes. The winning time, 106.41. 106.41. And race 25, once again, sponsored by Stella Dispatch. Theo Piper out of gate one, Daniel Winterton gate two, no gate three this time. Chad Wurzfeld has been very impressive, he's out of gate four this time. Kenneth Cruz Hansen in gate seven and Jakob Bukhaver in gate eight. Tony Atkin is in gate nine and the unbeaten James Shane's right on the outside this time. Is he going to be able to make the start and sweep round the outside of all of them? So away we go then, James Shanes has made a good start off that outside, Kenneth Hansen's made a good start too, Tony Atkins gone in there in second, it's Kenneth Hansen who comes through into that second though. Up the inside comes Theo Piper and Daniel Winterton once again has gone past the lot of them and they're together for this second place, it's Winterton in that second place. Theo Piper now turns the bike hard in the middle of the turn, he raises himself and he's fallen. Coming off that turn, a nasty looking spill between Theo Piper and Daniel Winterton. The red flags go out. The race is stopped, that's a nasty looking tumble for Daniel 
And for Tio, he lifted in the middle of the turn. So here we go with race 25, the riders coming to the line, James Shanes takes his place in gate 10, right on the outside first of all, on the line. So James Shanes, gate 10, unbeaten so far, can he make it three out of three? Tapes go up, it is James Shanes who leads down the back straight, Jakob Bukhav has followed him in there though. Tony Atkins in third and Chad Wurzfeld comes through into that third place, he goes into second as well. In fact Chad Wurzfeld's come right the inside of everybody. He throws it into this pit corner and Shanes and Wurzfeld are absolutely neck and neck going around that turn. A brilliant pit corner from Chad Wurzfeld who leads down the back straight. So what can James Shanes do? This is the first time he's been headed this afternoon. He throws it into the turn. Chad Wurzfeld though, he leads James Shanes at the moment. This is a real turn up for the books because Shanes has been unbeaten so far this afternoon. But at the moment, Chad Wurzfeld is looking absolutely fantastic at front. James Shanes though, closes going into that turn. Using all of his experience, he's got up the inside, he's made a gap, he's closely come past us, there's one more lap to go, Shanes now goes into the lead. A great ride by James Shanes up the inside, he's now got back in front of Chad Wurzfeld. A brilliant race between these two, it looks like Chad Wurzfeld's going to have another go, but James Shanes has got it sewn up, he's coming around, he takes the win. Chad Wurzfeld second, third place goes to Kenneth Cruz Hansen, Tony Atkin fourth, fifth place Jakob Buchhaber, a fantastic race between James Shanes and Chad Wurzfeld. And that was only a qualifying race. What are they going to come up with in the final? So the results of race 25, sponsored by Stella Despatch, a brilliant race. But it was a win for number 93, James Shanes. Second place, number 69, Chad Wurzfeld. Third place, number 333, Kenneth Cruz Hansen. Fourth place, number 10, Tony Atkin. And fifth place, number 79, Jakob Bukhava. The winning time, 105.38, 105.38. And now we move over to race 26, sponsored by RJC Autos, the Open 500 Solos, third leg. And we're expecting to see Wayne Broadhurst out of gate one, Luke Tuck out of gate two, Jason Prynne out of gate four, no gate three, of course, Stuart Mears not here today. Dean Cutler, David Hollingsby, Tim Kernock, Steve Tideswell coming in for James Peters, Paul Bowen, and no Dave Mears in gate 10. So, been very entertaining this open class this afternoon. Some very even races, away they go. It's a good start from the outside for Paul Bowen. Jason Prynne and Wayne Broadhurst have gone with him. It's Broadhurst who leads into the turn. Jason Prynne with that leg trailing style, gets it sideways, tucks it up the inside. Luke Tuck's fallen in the first turn. But it is Jason Prynne that leads. Wayne Broadhurst in that second place. Keeping an eye on Luke Tuck, I think he's going to be able to get back on the machine, or can I see a red flag? I'm not sure really. No, nope, just yellow flag, so we are carrying on. Jason Prynne with a healthy lead in front of Wayne Broadhurst at the moment. Uh, he's obviously sorted that machine out because it's looking very quick this time. It's Tim Kernock's now come through into that second place. Paul Bowen has settled into the fourth position. So, Jason Prynne really leading this one well. Tim Kernock and Wayne Broadhurst though, that's where my eyes are at the moment because they're battling and Wayne Broadhurst has come up the inside of Tim Kernock and he's gone by him as they come past us. So, Wayne Broadhurst back into second place. Will Tim Kernock have an answer for him on this final lap? Paul Bowen in fourth place isn't too far away either. Jason Brin has slowed a little at the late, at late stage of this race but I think he's got it all in hand. As they come around this final turn, it is a win for Jason Brin. Wayne Broadhurst finishes second. Very close on the line for third and fourth. Paul Bowen, I think, just ahead of Tim Kernock. Dean Cutler fifth. David Hollingsby finishing sixth. So the results of race 26, sponsored by RJC Autos. It was a win for number 25, Jason Prynne. Second place, number 158, Wayne Broadhurst. Third place, number 67, Paul Bowen. Fourth, number 726, Tim Kernock. Fifth place, number 57, Dean Cutler. Sixth place, number five, David Hollingsby. And seventh place, number four, Steve Tideswell. Winning time for Jason Prynne, 1 minute 14.56.
as we go to race 27, sponsored by SBS EPOS. Barry Coates comes in for Morton Quisgard, and Nigel Coates comes in for Aaron Butcher. No Finn Lohe there in nine, and no Harry Gent, but away they go. It's Liam Ashcroft who's made a brilliant start as they leave, and it's his brother Ryan who's up there in second. Nigel Coates is in there in third. So Ryan Ashcroft goes up the inside of Liam Ashcroft, and it's Ryan Ashcroft who now leads. Liam goes a little bit wide. Ryan, of course, won his second race. Nigel Coates is there in second, and Graham Brown's in third. So another good ride here from Ryan Ashcroft. This will see him comfortably into that A final. Graham Brown's now gone up the inside of Nigel Coates to take over that second place. But Nigel Coates isn't done yet. He's having another go at Graham Brown for that second. Will Thurby's now come on terms with Liam Ashcroft for this fourth place. So the last lap flag being made ready for Ryan Ashcroft. A good ride this. Still Will Thurby and Liam Ashcroft squabble over that fourth and fifth place. One more lap for Ryan Ashcroft then. Down the back straight they go then. Ashcroft followed by Brown, followed by Coates. Will Thalby seems to have established himself in that fourth place now. Around the final turn and is another win, a second win of the afternoon for Ryan Ashcroft. Second place to Graham Brown. Nigel Coates third, Will Thalby fourth. Liam Ashcroft fifth. Barry Coates in sixth, Jordan Knoll in seventh. And we've got our eighth place finisher, Daniel Broughton. So the results of race 27, sponsored by SBS EPOS. It was a win for number 45, Ryan Ashcroft. Second place, number three, Graham Brown. Third place, number seven, Nigel Coates. Fourth, number 47, Will Thalby. Fifth place, number 83, Liam Ashcroft. Sixth place, number 77, Barry Coates. Seventh place, number 95, Jordan Knoll. And eighth place, number 15, Daniel Broughton. And the winning time, 1 minute 14.63. 1.14.63. So, very comparable times there. Ryan Ashcroft, he has been going well at the late stage of this meeting. So, race 28 is coming to the line. Three wheels once again, the old and new sidecars. Mark Courtney and Leon Torres so far have won both of the races here. They had to work very hard for the second one. They lead at the moment on maximum 14 points. Liam Brown, he's had a second and a third. And Brian Hatch, number 69, had a good first ride and then pulled up in the second ride with a problem. So he's dropped points heading into this third leg. Four races of these today and the top point scorer will be the winner. So away they go. It's a great start on the inside for Mark Courtney and Leon Torres, but Brian Hatch and Liam Brown have made good starts from the middle as well. And it's Mark Courtney that leads. Liam Brown's in that second place and Brian Hatch has got himself into third. It seems like the bike stopped once again for Brian Hatch. A real shame for Brian. Once again, well positioned, but the machine stopping. So at the front, Mark Courtney, Leon Torres, leading ahead of Liam Brown and Frankie Courtney, who are very close to them as they go into this next lap. There's not a big difference between the two of these at the front. Mark Courtney currently in front, but Liam Brown is a little bit quicker down the back straight. So Mark Courtney's gone a little bit wide and Liam Brown's right on terms with him. They got very close as they came towards us. Liam seems a little bit quicker off the turns at the moment and he's once again quicker coming off the turn. But Mark Courtney seems to have it covered. As they go back into this turn, you see Mark, he's much quicker into the turn, Mark Courtney. But that does seem to push him wide coming off this turn and Liam Brown's able to hold the machine a little bit tighter, cover a little bit less ground. One more lap to go then. Will Liam Brown be able to get the better of Mark Courtney on this final lap? He knows where he's going to ride. We've got a passenger on the floor in front of us here who has thankfully moved out the way. So with the yellow flags out, there won't be any more overtaking. It is Mark Courtney that takes the win. Liam Brown finishes second. Chris Tyrrell and Willow Jeffrey will take third. So the results of race 28, sponsored by Vince Stone, Window Glazing. It was a win for number 72, Mark Courtney and Leon Torres. Second place, number three, Liam Brown and Frankie Courtney. Third place, number 169, Chris Tyrrell and Willow Jeffrey. And fourth place, number 181, Paul Nelson and Lewis Wharton. 
no fifth or sixth finisher. Herman Paul coming across the line with just himself, no passenger. That means that he's not featured in the results. The winning time, 128.28. 128.28. So, race 29, the 250 solos. And we've got no Phil Thomas in gate two. He's taken by uh, 413 Chris Simmons. No Aidan Arthur in gate four. His place taken by Giles Dismore, number 82. But everybody else should be as per programme, so we're expecting 10 riders on the line for this race number 29. Ace Piper's there on the line. That's good to see after his dad took that nasty tumble. So brave of Ace to get back on the, the machine. But away we go. It's Chris Steele that leads into the turn. Ace Piper has gone flying around the outside. He certainly does a little put off by that crash. It's Chris Steele in front. Ace Piper's got himself into second with that brilliant first turn. Tim Grigg in third. So this is exciting from Ace Piper. He's gone around the outside once again. He's up in line with Chris Steele going down that back straight. So Chris Steele leading. Ace Piper, he'll be looking for a gap, looking for a way past Chris Still. He's much, much quicker in the middle of the corner, but you can see that two straight machine so fast off the turns. So Tim Grigg in that third place, looking for a mistake. Chris Still lifts heavily coming off that turn. He's managed to keep going though. Last that flag is made ready then, and it looks like Chris Still might have this one sewn up, despite Ace Piper having a real go. On the back of Chris Steele. Great to see Ace Piper out there. 15 year old lad, saw his dad have a nasty accident, but still got himself back on the bike and is having a go. So into this final turn, I can see Ace has lost his steel shoe actually as he comes around here. It's going to be a win for Chris Steele and a great second place for Ace Piper. Third place to Tim Grigg. Fourth place to Carl Beddingfield. Austin Rich is fifth. Mark Wood sixth. Lee Bassett seventh and Chris Simmons eighth. So the results of race 29, sponsored by Brian Bassett. It was a win for number 76, Chris Still. Second place, number 696, Ace Piper. Third place, number 10, Tim Grigg. Fourth place, number 73, Carl Beddingfield. Fifth place, number 46, Austin Riches. Sixth place, number 24, Mark Woods. Seventh place, number three, Lee Bassett. And eighth place, number 413, Chris Simmons. And the winning time, 1 minute 13.85, 113.85. So, a great 250 race, and another one to follow with race 30, which will complete our third leg rides. No Graham Thomas in gate 5, his place taken by Jake Breeze, number 40. No Gary Cook in gate 3, his place taken by number 68, Chris Mackett. And Kenzie Cossey will race number 22, but apart from that, we are as per programme and we are away. And it's Ben Phillips that's made a great start, but Cameron Taylor quickly gets on side with him. And it's Cameron Taylor that leads into the turn. Ben Phillips lifts heavily in the middle of the corner and goes very, very wide. But it's Luke Harris that's taken up the challenge with Cameron Taylor. They're together as they go into that turn. Luke Harris in second. Cameron Taylor at the moment in front, but Luke Harris looks very fast in that second place. Sam Norris has fought his way through for that fourth place, but he's quickly being attacked by Adam Hawker on the inside. Look at the speed of these front two. Cameron Taylor and Luke Harris, two very quick 250 riders at the front. Sam Norris is making ground up on Ben Phillips for that third place. He's looking quick in that fourth place at the moment. Ben Phillips has had a look behind him. He's seen that Sam Norris is a lot nearer than he was before. Last that flag comes out then. He's tempting Luke Harris, Cameron Taylor. He's coming very wide off of this final turn. He's tempting Luke Harris up the inside. Sam Norris has got himself into that third place now. So, problems for Chris Mackett on this final corner, but it's going to be a win, I think, for Cameron Taylor. He takes the win. Luke Harris finishes second. Third place will be Sam Norris. Fourth place to Ben Phillips, number 34. Adam Hawker, Kenzie Cossey, Jake Breeze. So race 30, the 250 solo, sponsored by Team Palmer Racing. A very quick race time as well. But it was a win for number 101, Cameron Taylor. Second place, number 26, Luke Harris. Third place, number 7, Sam Norris. Fourth place, number 34, Ben Phillips. Fifth place, number 50, Adam Hawker. Sixth place, number 22, Kenzie Cossey. Seventh place, number 40, Jake Breeze. 
Eighth place, number 247, Jordan Derrick. Ninth place, number 68, Chris Mackett. And the winning time, 1 minute 10.91. 1 minute 10.91, the fastest 250 race of the day by a considerable gap as well. So out for another ride, we've got this demonstration from 14-year-old Max Perry, soon to be 15-year-old Max Perry in a couple of weeks. And we can't wait to see what he's going to do in the adult classes. Well, junior champion, of course. Racing for the uh, Leicester national team at the moment. So, well done to Max. He's not hanging about, is he? Certainly not taking his time around here. Really quick. So, race 31 will be the next race on the circuit. It's the right-hand sidecar C final. So, we know that a few of these riders that are lined up for this race have had tough days, and we're not sure. I think we might only have the two outfits in this one. Uh, number 20, Dale Fish and Jordan Fish come to the line, and Sale, Anthony Sales and Michael Topman as well. So just the two outfits surviving for the C final. So away they go, and Anthony Sales and Michael Topman get away, and uh, Dale Fish seems to have a problem here at the start. I'm not sure what's happened there. So the red flags are out, and uh, the race being stopped because something fairly terminal has happened there to Dale Fish. Anthony Sales obviously on his own now in the C final, since so rather than put him out in, on his own, he's going to go into the B final because there is a rider missing in the B final. So the sidecar B final, consisting of all the riders who have been in position 7 to 12. Top point scorer in this one, Robbie Simmons and Wayne Rickards, number 9. Just missing out on the A final, really unfortunate because he's had a good day. Number 15, Matthew Murray and Andy Wilson will be probably not best pleased with the B final, but uh, he'll want to go out and win this one. Number seven, Paul Johnson's had some good rides this afternoon. Michael Austin, number 991. Vinnie Branch in the chair. Seems to be getting quicker and quicker as he gets more experienced with the 1,000 sidecar racing. Will Penfold and Bradley Reynolds have had a few mechanical problems throughout the afternoon. And then Anthony Sales will be pleased to uh, be coming into this B final with some people to race against. So away they go, a huge wheel stand on the outside for Matt Fimarola, but he's still got quick. A big accident in front of us here. Anthony Sales has gone over, coming off the start. They've all gone charging into the turn. And the red flags are out. Will Penfold was in front at that point, but everyone has slowed up quickly. So problems for Anthony Sales and Michael Topman coming off this line, this start line here. So the rerun of this B final. The tapes go up, away they go, and it is Robbie Simmons who makes a good start for the middle, but it's Matt Fimaroda and Andy Wilson who lead into the turn. Will Penfold's gone in after him. He's gone very tight. They all come together in the middle of the corner. It's Will Penfold and Robbie Simmons is trying to get up the inside there, neck and neck down the back straight. It's Will Penfold who leads, though. Robbie Simmons gets his way into that second place. Matt Fimaroda's right there on his shoulder, though, as they come around this corner. Will Penfold now leading. Robbie Simmons in that second place. He's chasing after Will Penfold 
for that lead, but Matt Fimarella's dropped back in that third place. Michael Austin's in fourth. We've lost Paul Johnson somewhere around the circuit. So Will Penfold having the best race of the day here as he leads this B final. Robbie Simmons though is chasing hard after him as he goes tight into this corner. Down the back straight they go then. Will Penfold and Bradley Reynolds. Can Robbie Simmons do anything about this? As they go into this turn. The last lap flag's made ready at the moment. It doesn't look like Robbie Simmons has got an answer to Will Penfold. Matt Fimarola still in that third place. Still trying to find a gap for Robbie Simmons. He's got very close in the middle of the turn. He's turned it sideways. Completely sideways in front of Matt Fimarola. That's allowed Will Penfold to get away. Who slows going into this turn. It looks like everything's gone. Will Penfold's way, he's going to come on his turn, a fabulous ride by Will Penfold and Bradley Reynolds. Robbie Simmons second, third place to Matt Fimrola. Michael Austin in fourth. Great racing from the sidecars for the B final, race 35. So race 35, the right-hand sidecar B final, a brilliant race in this B final. Give them a round of applause as they come by. It was a win for number 22, Will Penfold and Bradley Reynolds. A fine display in this B final. Great racing from there. Second place to number nine, Robbie Simmons and Wayne Rickards. Third place in that B final, Matt Fimarola, number 15, with Andy Wilson in the chair. And fourth place, number 991, Michael Austin and Vinnie Branch. No fifth or sixth, a very quick time. 1 minute 20.47. 120.47 is the time. So this circuit seems to have got very quick for these finals, and Will Penfold was absolutely on it in that race a great b final that was only the b final we've got the a final to come of course so the 250 solo b final sponsored by dog's body photography coming to the line austin riches jordan derrick jake breeze kenzie costi chris mackett lee bassett chris simmons and richie knight go head to head and head in this one tapes come up on this 250 b final and it's a great start for kenzie costi and Austin Riches, the two youngsters making their adult debuts, but Chris Mackett goes through up the inside as they go into this turn. So, Kenzie Cossey leads out the turn. Jake Breeze has come up the inside of Austin Riches and gone into that second place. So, Kenzie Cossey leading this one. A really good ride from Kenzie Cossey here. Straight up from youth. He's been a steady rider through the youth racing, and now he's going well in the adults. Followed by Jake Breeze with Austin Riches in that third. So the last lap flag being made ready then for Kenzie Cossey. Jake Breeze, no answer to him in that second place. Jordan Derrick is looking lively in that fourth place as he tries to come round the outside of Austin Riches. Almost runs out of room. Manages to stop the machine right on the outside. But Kenzie Cossey, number 22. A great ride here in this B final. Great to see him at the front. Round he comes for the final time. It's going to be a B final win. A great win for Kenzie Cossey. Second place to Austin Riches with Jake Breeze third. Very close between Chris Mackett and Jordan Derrick. So the results of race 20, race 32, sponsored by Dogs Body Photography, the 250 solo B final. It was a win for number 22, Kenzie Cossey. Second place, number 46, Austin Riches. Third place, number 40, Jake Breeze. Fourth place, number 68, Chris Mackett. And fifth place, number 247, Jordan Derrick. Sixth place, number 413, Chris Simmons. The winning time, 1 minute 16.22. 116.22. Now we move our attention over to the open solo B final. Dean Cutler, number 57. Steve Tideswell, number four. Daniel Broughton, David Hollingsby, Jordan Knoll, and Luke Tuck. Six riders in this B final. So away we go with this open solo B final, and it is De Dean Cutler and Luke Tuck that lead them into the turn. Top point scorer going into this race, Dean Cutler. Nice to see him back going so well. But it's Luke Tuck that leads off this turn. Narrowly in front of Dean Cutler, Jordan Knoll is in that third place. So Luke Tuck, number 89, leading the way at the moment. Had a fall earlier on, but he's obviously 
not feeling too many ill effects from that fall, but Dean Cutler's keeping him rear, keeping him honest on that inside. He's pushed him wide, he's got past him. It's a good move from Dean Cutler, getting up the inside of Luke Tuck there. And they go together into that pit corner there, completely neck and neck in the middle of the corner, but now Dean Cutler breaks away and he'll look to establish himself, but Luke Tuck's very quick down the back straight. Back into this bottom turn, Dean Cutler. He's riding this turn well, right in the middle of the circuit. One more lap to hang on. Can Luke Tuck do anything about him in this last lap as they go into the pit corner? It looks as though Dean Cutler's got enough space between himself and Luke Tuck heading into this final corner. I think he's going to cling on to this B final. Round the turn they come. It's going to be a win in this B final for Dean Cutler. Brilliant win for him. Luke Tuck comes second. Jordan Null third. Fourth place to Steve Tideswell, fifth place to Daniel Broughton, and David Hollingsby sixth. So the results of race 33, the Open Solo B final, sponsored by Dog's Body Photography. It was a win for number 57, Dean Cutler. Second place, number 89, Luke Tuck. Third place, number 95, Jordan Knoll. Fourth place, number four, Steve Tideswell. Fifth place, number 15, Daniel Broughton. And sixth place, number five, David Hollingsby. And the winning time, one minute 18. 118.75 and we move to race 34 sponsored by Stella Despatch the Elite Solo B final and we are expecting to see in this Elite Solo Aaron Butcher number 20 I can see him going to the line Tio Piper has qualified but we know he was quite badly knocked about earlier I think that is Tio going onto the circuit possibly now I think that's somebody else Morton Quiscard I think coming out onto this, the line Alfie Botel I can see and it looks like Finn Lohider as well we've got one more race the old and new sidecars, leg four, and then we've got the big finals at the end of the day. Away they go then, and it's Aaron Butcher that makes a good start, but Alfie Botel has gone into the lead as they hit the corner. So Alfie Botel, he leads into the turn, and Butcher's in that second place. It's number 66, Finn Lohader at the moment, who's in that third, and Morton Quiscard fourth. So Alfie Botel out in front, but Aaron Butcher's there. He's still close. He's still not letting him go. Number 202, Alfie Botel, lots of speedway experience, turned his attention to grass track last year after racing at Bantasia 1. It's been a tough day for Alfie, but good to see him in front here, but Aaron Butcher's very close to him still going into this turn. He's not letting him go, he's going to go round him if he can. He's got the motor on, he's going right round the outside of him. Botel's going to have to push him wide. they got one more lap to go. So Aaron Butcher, what can he do about Alfie Botel in the last part of this race? Now Alfie will know that Aaron is mounting a challenge. He'll know that he'll have to keep it pinned for another half a lap as he goes into this turn. Butcher's gone completely sideways into the turn. They're absolutely neck and neck. He's switched up the inside. It's a chase to the line. It's just out Alfie Botel. Great racing between Alfie and Aaron Butcher. Third place will be Finn Lohida from Germany. And Morton Quiscard will finish in fourth. So another great B final. It was a win for number 202 Alfie Botel. Second place, number 20, Aaron Butcher. Third place, number 66, Finn Lohida. And fourth place, number 412, Morton Quiscard. The winning time, 1 minute 12.07, 1.12.07. So away we go with this last of the old and new sidecars and it's Mark Courtney and Leon Torres who lead into the first turn. They've led, well they've won every one of the three races so far. They really, barring any disasters, can't be stopped here. Chris Tyrrell's got himself into that second place. Liam Brown in third at the moment. So Mark Courtney and Leon Torres, they have been once again the crew to be in the old and new sidecar class. Liam Brown's actually slipped through for that second place ahead of Chris Tyrrell now. Paul Nelson's in that fourth place at the moment. So Mark Courtney, Leon Torres looking very quick down the back straight. So this is looking like it's gonna be four wins out of four for Mark Courtney and Leon Torres. They won Bantasia 1, they look like they're going to win Bantasia 2 as well. A nice trophy to take back to Cornwall with them. One more lap to go, Liam Brown in that second place. 
He's still got the A-final to go on the back of Terry Saunters, of course. So round the corner for the final time. It's a fourth win, four out of four for Mark Courtney and Leon Torres. They take the win. Liam Brown in second, third place to Chris Tyrrell and Paul Nelson in fourth. So the results of race 36, the old and new sidecar sponsored by Vince Stone Window Glazing. It was a win for number 72, Mark Courtney and Leon Torres, and that gives them the win overall as well. Second place, number three, Liam Brown and Frankie Courtney. Third place, number 169, Brian Hatch and Sorry, 169 is Chris Tyrrell and Willow Jeffrey. In fourth place, number 181, Paul Nelson and Lewis Walton. And the winning time, 1 minute 28.53. 128.53. So next up, we'll have the first of our big finals, the 250 solo final sponsored by Dogs Body Photography. And contesting that final will be 101 Cameron Taylor, 76 Chris Steele, 26 Luke Harris, 50 Adam Hawker, 10 Tim Grigg, 7 Sam Norris, Ace Piper number 696, Carl Beddingfield, Mark Woods and Ben Phillips. So away we go with this 250 solo final and it's Luke Harris and Cameron Taylor that lead off the line. It's Cameron Taylor that noses in front. Luke Harris attacks on the outside as they go into this turn. He's going to have to go right the way around the outside. But it is Cameron Taylor and Luke Harris locked together as they come past us. Tim Griggs in that third place. Ben Phillips is just... Oh, he stopped as he goes into that turn, Ben Phillips. I think he lost a chain. But at the front, Cameron Taylor leading Luke Harris. But Harris is up the inside. They are together as they go into this turn. Cameron Taylor in front, Luke Harris on the inside, he's going to try and come up the inside of him. Back into the pit turn then, Cameron Taylor leading currently, but can he hang on because Luke Harris is all over the back of him. The fight for third place rages between Chris Steele and Tim Grigg as well, but it is Cameron Taylor as he comes around the turn, he's got one more lap to go. He is looking like he's going to defend his Fantasia title. At Fantasia 2, Chris Steele is currently leading that battle for third, but Tim Grigg is still all over him. Ace Piper's got himself into that fifth place. So round the turn for the final time, and it's going to be another win. It's going to be Cameron Taylor. He takes the 250 class. Luke Harris finishes second. It's going to be close on the line. It's Tim Grigg who sneaks through for third. Chris Steele fourth. Ace Piper fifth. Adam Hawker sixth. Carl Burningfield seventh. So the results of race 37, the 250 solo final, it was a win for number 101, Cameron Taylor. Second place, number 26, Luke Harris. Third place, number 10, Tim Grigg. Fourth place, number 76, Chris Steele. Fifth place, number 696, Ace Piper. Sixth place, number 50, Adam Hawker. And seventh place, number 73, Carl Beddingfield. And the winning time, 112.06. 112.06. And now we go to our Open 500 Solo A final, race 38. So here we go for this Open Solo final, away they go. It's a great start for Liam Ashcroft, but it's Jason Prynne that leads into the turn. Wayne Broadus has gone chasing in after him in second place. They all get together in the middle of the corner. Jason Prynne's gone incredibly wide. And Ryan Ashcroft's come through to the lead. So Ryan Ashcroft now leading. Jason Prynne made a mistake in that first turn. He's now got a hunt down Ryan Ashcroft. He's going back around the outside. But Ryan Ashcroft's going to try and keep him out there. Wayne Broadhurst is there as well. They're all together in the middle of this corner. Now Wayne Broadhurst has got himself back in front. And Jason Prynne is very wide again. Broadhurst leads, then Ashcroft in second. Jason Prince still incredibly wide on the outside. He's now got to try and tuck it underneath Wayne Broadhurst as he comes off this turn. But Wayne Broadhurst leads. Back into this bottom corner. Now, can Jason Prince get a tighter line here? He's turned the bike much harder. That's a much better line for Jason Prince this time. He's now got to mount a challenge in this last lap on Wayne Broadhurst. Up the back straight they go. Has Wayne Broadhurst got enough to cling on or will Jason Prynne attack on this last bend as they go into this turn? Wayne Broadhurst is struggling to turn the bike. Jason Prynne's got the machine turned already and he's fallen. Jason Prynne wins. Ryan Ashcroft second. It's Graham Brown, I think, who was third. Disaster for Wayne Broadhurst. Absolute disaster. Last corner. 
So a brilliant A final for the Open Solos. Disaster at the end for Wayne Broadhurst, but it was a win for number 25, Jason Prynne. Second place, number 45, Ryan Ashcroft. Third place, number 67, Paul Bowen. Fourth place, number three, Graham Brown. Fifth place, number 47, Will Thalby. Sixth place, number seven, Nigel Coates. Seventh place, number 83, Liam Ashcroft. Eighth place, number 726, Tim Carnock. Ninth place, number 77, Barry Coates. And the winning time, 1 minute 12.81. 112.81. And now we turn our attention to the Elite Solo A Final. So here we go with this big elite solo final sponsored by Stella Dispatch and away they go and it's Zach Vikneck who shows he's made a great start but it's James Shanes on the inside. Shanes has fallen into the turn heavily. A nasty fall for James Shanes going into that turn. We've lost another rider as well. I think Zach Vikneck has fallen in the middle of the turn as well. <laughs> right thanks everyone for uh, for sticking with us oh such a shame it ended like that we've obviously we're all thinking about james and how he's doing and everything else but yeah such a shame because it was going so well the riders just giving it everything today um we've been yeah blown away by the kindness of the riders for coming for the fans for coming for the whole thing, it was all going so smoothly and then people started to get hurt and we never like to see that. So we're all feeling, I'm sure you're all feeling yourselves a little bit like it's not quite ended how we wanted. But we've got some winners, we've got some champions and we're looking forward to uh, giving out the prizes to some of these very brave riders that have been riding very, very well uh, this afternoon. Um, I think we'll go with the uh, open solo first, if that's the right of you. So third place in the open solo class today it's, uh, it's Paul Bowen, so well done, Paul. <laughs> and second place in the open solo class. Great to see him coming up here, Ryan Ashcroft. And the winner of the Open Solo class, Jason Prynne. Right, I want to talk to Paul quickly because don't go in here, Ryan. You might have to lean across. Paul, uh, obviously new to grass track, you must be delighted with third place. Yeah, uh, started off with a fall in my first one, um, <laughs> typical me, but yeah, no, it was good. First proper race, um, enjoyed it. The the lads in the final, was uh, it was good to sort of hang with them and get a third place, so yeah, I'm chuffed. 
Yeah, brilliant stuff, Paul. In second place, Ryan. It must be coming on my stag, did it, did it, mate? <laughs> Ryan Ashcroft, great racing. Obviously, you looked like uh, you were in front at one point. It looked like you were going to win it all. Yeah, I was knackered, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Not as knackered as Wayne was. Uh, yeah, no. It's just a bit of a bit of a rest there, didn't he? So, yeah. <laughs> No, it's all right. It's all good. It's all good. So pleased with that one, and uh, obviously didn't quite catch this man next to you in the final. Yeah, no, I was sort of like, oh, he's getting a bit further away. Look up again. Oh, he's a bit further away again. It's like, oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> couldn't have said it better myself. Jason, you always step at the top at our meetings. You do really well around here. You must like the track. Um, yeah, it's been a hard day. Um, my engine fell to pits after a couple of races. So i got to thank Justin, my mechanic, and uh, Mark and Roger Taylor for it's totally rebuilding it just about halfway through the meeting, but we got there in the end thanks to Wayne blowing in the dust, so I'll take that. Yeah, spare a thought for Wayne Broader, that's a tough one to swallow that one, isn't it? But well done to our third, second and first in the Open class. <laughs> so in the old and new side, we love having the old and new sidecars here because they went... They <laughs> They go so well round here and they were brilliant last time. Great again today. In third place though, Chris Hero and Willow Jeffrey. <laughs> He's gone home. Good, because he hasn't got a trophy anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, in second place then, Liam Brown and Frankie Courtney. And the winners once again, the Michael Schumacher of the old and new sidecar class, Mark Courtney and Leon Torres. Very well done, and Liam, obviously you'll be up again in a minute, but uh, enjoying driving the outfit, you still didn't quite get him? No, it's it's all a good laugh, I just, I literally just pulled it out at workshop last week and thought, oh, I better get it ready now. <laughs> um, but no, it's just been one of them days, it's just, couldn't get out of starts, and yeah, Mark, I wasn't going to catch Mark, so I just give up in end. <laughs> yeah, didn't catch him, and uh, Mark, uh, another win. Another trophy. Um, yeah, it's about time that you retired, I suppose, and give someone else a chance. <laughs> no, no, not yet. Maybe another season or two. But they've done well today. They give us a run for our money, so all good. And nice for the uh, old and new class to be, you know, included and be, uh, you know, in front of lots of people, lots of people that might even want to ride one. Yeah, hopefully it was a good show and everybody enjoyed it. So, yeah, happy. We're good. Great stuff. So, second and first in the old and new sidecar class. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You just, yeah. Shall I just tell Claire? Yeah, that'd be good. So the 250 solo class, a really competitive class this afternoon. Some brilliant racing in this class. Right on the line, this man managed to get himself third place. Tim Grigg. And second place in the 250 class, he really did push Cameron all the way, Luke Harris. <laughs> and the winner once again, he's defended his Bantasia Championship. He really is going places, this lad, Cameron Taylor. So, Tim, great final, great ending to the final anyway. Yeah, I enjoyed that. It's always nice to have a good battle with somebody, wouldn't it, through the race. Myself and Chris had had quite a few in the heats as well, so, yeah, nice end to the day. Really a good end to the day, and, uh, yeah, Chris was flying as well, so good ending to the race. Luke, you did everything you could to get on terms with Cameron, but he just had enough, didn't he? Yeah, I've been, you know, trying to save it for the final day, so um, just trying to get them little tweaks in the setup, and, uh, 
you know, I wasn't really on the favoured engine today, which unfortunately went bang in practice. So, uh, uh, no, it was it was good overall and uh, first 250 meeting of the year. So, um, looking forward to what else is to come. Excellent, Luke and Cameron. Uh, well, you make a habit of this. You won last week, won our meeting last year. Uh, another win. And uh, what are we doing for the rest of the year? Is it more 250s? Yeah, um, I got a few 350 meetings booked in. But yeah, for the second meeting of the season, pretty good result. Happy with it. Good track. Big thanks to the club for a good meeting. Thanks to dad and granddad. But yeah, good day. Great stuff. Congratulations. So well done to Tim Grigg, Luke Harris and our champion, Cameron Taylor. <laughs> So now on to the 1,000 sidecar class. I think it's fair to say that the racing in the sidecar class was pretty ferocious today. There was plenty of bumping and boring going into this first turn. We love all that, don't we? Well, I do now. I don't race them. Third place, though. Brilliant races today. Neil Owen and Jason Farwell. Yay! Don't give him that. <laughs> <laughs> and in second place today, another good day's racing for this crew, Terry Saunters and Liam Brown. Terry's in the beer tent, Gary's here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and our winner, defending the Bantasia Championship, the domination continues, Mark Cosser and Gareth Williams. I'm waiting for the, the nod. Right, Neil. I might, you might have to come to me a bit, Neil, I'm afraid. I'm a bit stuck. Thank you. Thank you. Here he comes. Great racing. You were flying at the end there. I'm uh, probably a bit disappointed the final didn't run. Yeah, it would have been nice to have a, uh, the crack of the top boys, you know, in the final. But uh, we were pleased with the performance. Uh, good thank you to Gary uh, Drake in Gordons. He built the engine. This is our first meeting. So it was a big effort for, for everyone. Yeah, obviously the uh, sixth place, the top six in the Masters last year. I know that sore point for Liam, given what happened to Jason, but six top six has pushed you on a little bit, hasn't it? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, the work we've been doing on Gary and Gordon's little tweaks on the engine, getting some more performance on the engine, and and with us riding it, uh, yeah, we definitely starting to move up the ladder a bit. Cracking stuff, cracking stuff. Well, well done for your third place. Now. I've spoke to Liam, so I'll catch you, Terry. Uh, first place last week, second this week, and who knows, the final didn't run, so who knows what would have happened in the final, but yeah, it's uh, it's coming to you, this driving, isn't it? Yeah, it seems to be at the minute. Um, yeah, obviously, yeah, having Liam as a passenger is always going to work well. Yeah, the driving, yeah, this must be a natural thing, I suppose, but <laughs> don't expect it all every week. <laughs> Pressure's on. He was talking about, we were talking last night about your gating, and we think we know why you're gating, but your gating seems to be incredible. Yeah, a lot of people keep saying that. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing different to anyone else, but it's, it's working. Is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is then. Fair enough. He said it's the ignition that he built, Mark said. Yeah, well, well done. Great days racing. Both of you were flying. So uh, not quite as quick as this man, though. few teething problems at the start, but uh, yeah, got there in the end and back to domination, Mark. I might have to give you this because you're a long way up. Yeah, no, well, we um struggling on the speedway with a misfire and it transferred to this bike. But we uh, we got it right for the second one, and yeah, shame the final didn't run, but it's a good day. 
Yeah, great day and great to have you here and great to win Bantasia again. Third place, Neil Owen and Jason Farwell. Second place, Terry Saunders and Liam Brown. But our champions once again, Mark Cosser and Gareth Williams. Technical hitch. So on to our final class and the elite solos uh, sponsored by Stella Despatch and Paul Munter, a real friend of the club. Sadly, Paul's had to go. He was going to do the trophies. Uh, that's, that's who Claire's standing in for, but we are forever in debt to Stella Despatch and what they've done to really put together what I'm sure you'll agree was a big, big lineup of elite solos today. The racing was fierce, fast, ferocious, unpredictable, fantastic. But there are three very worthy gentlemen that are coming up here to stand up here. Before we start, it's obviously point worth pointing out we are thinking about James and hoping that he's OK. It certainly would have been one heck of a final if it had run. But as it turns out, they decided to run it over points. And in third place on points, Paul Cooper! And second place in the elite solo class, great to see him going so well, Chad Wurtzfeld! <laughs> and our winner and Bantasia champion for 2022, Zach Feitnick! So we'll go down to Paul first. So Paul, we've uh, we had all of these riders here, these speedway riders, riders from across the country. We've ended up with three British grass trackers on the rostrum. Well, what else do you think? <laughs> Foreigners can't ride in a trash track, can they? They really struggle. <laughs> they have gone home. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, first off, thank you very much to you guys and, and all, well, all you guys for setting up this meeting. It was really good to come and my first time here and you guys have done a great job. And thank you very much for all you spectators who've come supporting the club, supporting us riders and you guys who are still here now when you all could have cleared off and gone home. So thank you very much to everyone who's here as well. Thank you, guys. And also I'd like to thank all my sponsors who helped me out prepare stuff over the over the winter and get ready for this season um yeah and hopefully we can get on the rostrum a few more times in the year yeah well absolutely i mean it's a big lineup and you've uh, you know to come out third with that sort of lineup it must be, it's a great start isn't it it's a great start yeah considering i'm probably my age is probably more than these two put together but still yeah <laughs> no it, it's great i mean I, I love riding my grass track I've, I've been doing a fair bit of flat tracking over the winter um, love getting back on the grass. It's really made me realise how much I've missed it and really looking forward to a busy season uh, in the UK as much as I can and also abroad where I can go to. So, yeah. Cracking stuff. Well done, Paul. Brilliant stuff. And Chad, uh, from strength to strength at the moment, I know you were really looking forward to this one and, uh, yeah, it pretty much went to plan, didn't it? A really good day. Yeah, it was good. I was um, just getting some good results during the races and then led the final until it was stopped, which was uh, annoying, but... <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, how it goes sometimes. Yeah, it's how it goes. That is racing. But, um, I mean, you must be really pleased with the pace you're showing up against what are world-class riders. Yeah, it was really good. You know, we sort of came here happy if we got into the final and then to be second is really good. Yeah, great stuff. Well done, Chad. And our champion, Zach Feitnick. Zach, great day's racing. Obviously, you really came into your own uh, towards the second and third heats. Yeah, it was good. Um, just good, good first meeting. And uh, it's always tough to... to try the bikes again and stuff i was lucky to have a practice last weekend but um no yeah good meeting british grass track in it a bit, bit rough and bumpy sometimes but no it's a good track yeah you love it zach you love it mate <laughs> you go so well on it that's the trouble it must you know there must be somewhere back in the back of your mind that really it suits you yeah definitely obviously if you make the start it's a lot easier um so just hope james is all right i don't, don't really know what happened i think if my chain didn't come off i would have stayed on so but um no 
great event. Well done to you guys and everyone that come. And uh, yeah, good day. Apart from that. <laughs> yeah, apart from that. Well, thanks very much, guys. It's been great to see you racing. Third, second, and first in the Elite Solo. Well, that's about it for Bantasia Two. They're too bit they're busy getting the kids drunk at the front here, I think. Thank you so much to everyone for sticking around and staying for a bit later, even though it's got cold. Hopefully you've enjoyed the meeting. Hopefully we can go from strength to strength together. As a grass track family, that's what it's all about. We want to try and make grass track brilliant once again, and we need your support with that. So thank you for coming. Thank you for all your support. Safe journeys home, and we will see you trackside very soon. <laughs> So that's about it for Bantasia 2. It's all over. It's been a brilliant day's racing. There's been plenty of thrills, sadly some nasty spills as well. And our thoughts are with those fallen riders today. But we've seen some brilliant racing. We set out to, to have some world-class racing here at Bantasia 2. And I think that's what we've seen. The sidecars have been breathtaking. The elite solos have been just what we thought they would be. And it's now time to take it all down. So we've all got to stay here, get everything taken down, get ready for the next meeting on the 24th of July. Hopefully you've enjoyed this meeting. Hopefully you've enjoyed Bantasia too. Big thanks to Speedway Portal for putting it all together for us. And we hope to see you trackside very soon. <laughs>